Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kaplan and crew on a Monday afternoon. Today is November the 7th. Wow, that's all it is, is November the 7th. I don't, I listen, the last three days, I don't know what the hell's going on. And then last night with Alex's wedding, I knew I was going to be hurting today. So let me just uh, have a few minutes here, mention our sponsors, and then we're going to jump right into it. Jason Lawhead's going to fill in today for Grande. And there was breaking news earlier in the day that we got to jump right into. So here it goes. First and foremost, let me start off by thanking all of our great sponsors. The first one I want to thank is Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Um, sometimes when I talk to great friends, they say, what else can we do for the show? And gosh, I really appreciate that. The number one thing you can do, support our sponsors. Meaning, if you want to go play blackjack or poker, you go to Seven Mile Casino. They are seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. They are completely smoke-free. They've got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar, which is Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza, in the casino itself. So you got the best location, the most convenient location, the best food, and you got all the great table games that you love. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. And if you have any problem with gambling, you call 1 800 Gambler. This is fun. Have fun. Good luck. You are a winner at Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. Hey, if you're heading down that way, if you are in the Chula Vista area, you know, there's California Holistics, which is down in Chula Vista, there's Tory Holistics, which is up in Sorrento Valley. They're both amazing stores. So again, you want to support the show, you say, well, what do I do? There's lots of places where you can go buy cannabis products, but Tory Holistics is our spot up north. California Holistics is our spot down south. And you're saving 20% when you spend $75 or more when you use our promo code, got your back. That's got your back. Tory Holistics and California Holistics. Okay, let me have a minute here to talk for a second about, well, have a minute to talk for a second about Alex's wedding last night. Browner, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but Alex last night looked so good in his suit. Not that his suit doesn't make you look good. Guys lost 15 pounds in like the last eight weeks with iThrive. And if you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and you click on the iThrive logo, it's going to take you to their weight loss accelerator program, fully FDA approved. They say you're guaranteed to lose weight. I've seen it now with a variety of different people who are connected to the show, not just Alex, but others as well. So listen, if you're thinking about losing weight, you don't have to change your diet. You don't have to change your exercise regimen. You just call iThrive, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497, or visit our website, kaplanandcrew.com. Okay, hey, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty. Gary's been talking to us quite a bit about why it's important to buy a home now, uh, or if you can. And the answer is, is because we are, whether we want to admit it or not, I mean, this is just talking to people that are professional economist types, which I had a very long beach walk with one of these guys yesterday. We're in what is considered to be a recession. And what will happen is when we come out of a recession, the Fed will eventually lower interest rates. So while interest rates are a bit higher right now, the interest rates will be lower. But when the interest rates go lower, the housing prices are going to go up. So if you can, now's a great time, but never really do this stuff without talking to a professional in the industry. That's Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Um, one other that I would like to mention to you today is Penske San Diego. Now, we've worked with Mazda of Escondido for a really long time, had tremendous success with Mazda of Escondido. The thing is, all the other Penske dealers were like, what about us? And we said, well, why don't we work with everybody at Penske? Do you know that Penske has in San Diego, Acura, Audi, BMW, Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, who you already know, Mercedes, and Toyota. There are 12 dealerships in San Diego that are all owned and operated by Penske. So shop PenskeSanDiego.com. That's PenskeSanDiego.com. They've got every brand you want, and they're blanketing the entire county. Shop Penske San Diego dot com. All right, let's do so this. So I can still get my oh, wait, wait. so I can still get my MX thirty. Yeah, if you want that Mazda, I mean they're still working okay. with us. They're just part of the bigger group, you know, the bigger family. You feel me? That's all. All right, all right. Listen, support our sponsors. Let's start the show. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kaplan and crew just getting onto the airwaves of ten ninety. So broadcasting from our home base in San Diego into Orange County, L.A., and north, above, and beyond the Central Coast. So wherever you can get us on radio, glad to have you guys here on a Monday afternoon. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, all the chatlins out there, make sure you get yourself involved in the YouTube live chat. Make sure you subscribe. We're pushing to get to 7,500 subscribers by the end of this year. 
So make sure you're helping out because the Chatlins, you guys are the heart and soul of what we do around here. All the different audio podcasters, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, Amazon Music, iHeart. Glad to have everybody around, whether you're listening today on Monday in the afternoon or you're catching up on your own time. Glad you guys are all here. And to everybody that will be watching tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara. It's Channel 118 in Orange County and in L.A. So wherever you can hear us on radio, you can see us on television as part of the Cox Your View Network. Uh, today, because Grande got married last night, Jason Lawhead is filling in. And Jay's going to be here for the most of this week, as a matter of fact. So Alex is going to be on a little mini honeymoon. And uh, Jay Law is going to be filling in. And we welcome everybody into the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. Browner, you move over and uh, and you take over for Grande this week. How you feeling? You feeling ready to go? As always, I'm ready to go, but I'm having some uh, malfunctions. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Got to get my, uh, my my screen up. I got to get my ads up. Got to make my money, my subliminal money. But other yeah. than that, we could. What a, listen, what a outright crazy Friday to Sunday. And now Monday is turning into a holy bleep Monday. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, I will just say like from Friday night until here we are Monday afternoon, a lot has transpired, you know, from mm -hmm. the ending of the world series to uh, what was an incredible weekend of college football Lots of shocking developments yesterday in the NFL. There's NBA stuff that we could be jumping our, our way into. Uh, but I will just say this. As we get to Monday afternoon, it's the reports from earlier in the day about San Diego State joining the Pac-12, which I think mm -hmm. many of us have wanted for a really long time. And it prayed wasn't about. until. Wait, say again. We prayed about it. Yeah, we, we have like been talking about this forever, and it wasn't until USC and UCLA have taken off for the, for the Big Ten to where San Diego State actually becomes attractive to the Pac-12, which is it's good and bad. It's unfortunate because the reason you wanted San Diego State in there was to compete against USC and UCLA. Now USC and UCLA take off, but San Diego State becomes the attractive Southern California market program. And if the reports are accurate, and remember, when USC and UCLA, when the reports surfaced that they were taken off for the Big Ten, by the, by the latter part of the day, both of those schools were making announcements. With Dan Patrick earlier today on a national radio show saying that San Diego State is reportedly headed towards the Pac-12, I wonder if before we get off the air today, we will hear from San Diego State. But I will just say this, and then we'll get in. I mean, we got so much to get to, and we got a lot of time. I will just say this. Um, none of this surprises me in that talking to Mike Bone at USC, and I was with Mike this past week and I went to the USC Cal game. We didn't talk about this, but we have in the past. He actually thinks as a former San Diego State athletic director that San Diego State was primed to get an invitation to a major conference, and in this case, the Pac-12. Um, so that's number one. Oh, there, there's a picture from Saturday night. There I am with Mike Bone in the athletic director's suite at USC. Man, oh man, what an incredible job USC has done to refurbish the LA Coliseum and particularly where all their big donors spend their time in those luxury suites. I mean, it is out of control. It might be better than any NFL stadium I've seen in terms of just hospitality, but talking to Mike bone, Mike has said that he thinks San Diego state again, remember he was a San Diego state athletic director. He thinks they were primed and ready for an invitation to one of the major conferences. And with USC and UCLA leaving, San Diego State becomes the most attractive school in Southern California. And it's not really just because of a new stadium for football. I believe it's really more about the basketball program. The other part of this, if you're just putting two and two together, is there's been a lot of reports that J.D. Wicker, the athletic director from San Diego State, might take off and head to a school in the, the SEC. Um, his alma mater, as I recall, Mississippi State. And um, I've always expected J.D. Wicker to leave. I've always expected that building Snapdragon Stadium will go on his resume and he'll take off for a major power conference kind of a school. Um, but J.D. has said recently that um, while people were you know, asking him about the possibility of going back to his home, he was telling people, we got a lot to do here at San Diego State. We got a lot going on. So if you're just putting two and two together, the report makes a lot of sense. And we'll just wait to hear from the Pac-12 and from San Diego State. We'll get to that story coming up in greater detail. Let me say good afternoon to Jason Lawhead, who's filling in this week for Grande Alejandro. 
Jay Law, welcome back. I know you were over in Europe celebrating your 50th birthday. We was following your trip the whole time on social media. How we doing, man? Dude, it's it's great to be back. I'm honored to sit in Alex's seat, especially on this big week of his. And, uh, you know, um, so great to see him. Uh, all the pictures you guys posted. I, him and I traded some nice texts uh, last week. Just me giving a little three year. This is what it was like. Enjoy. Drink it all in. Mm -hmm. you know, don't sweat the, the big stuff. Just enjoy the day. Smile. Say hello. Rem try to remember as much as you can of the day because it's hard to when you get married, I think. But um, yeah, man, just honored to be here. A great trip to Spain. I'm, I'm north of 50. So uh, it's all downhill, literally downhill in the back nine from here. But I feel good. Like you cap a little over 50, you know, age is just a number. Well, Browner keeps telling me that I'm past middle age. Like I've said that I'm middle age now. And Browner keeps telling me that I'm past middle age. Hey, Jay, how old's your mom and dad? 85. My dad will be. Next month, my mom's uh, right behind them. They're high school sweethearts. So she's a couple months. She's uh, actually my my mom and my wife's birthdays are uh, a day apart. You hear that, Browner? So that means Jason Lawhead is not middle-aged either. It means that he's also beyond middle age. Now, who knows? Listen, if his dad lives it. to like, you know, 100 and change, God willing. And guy's hey. beaten cancer like five times already. <laughs> I know. My dad's beaten cancer. Uh, you know, um, he's beaten a couple of cancers, meaning the horoscopes. But um, uh, no, <laughs> uh, he uh, and yeah, you know, I mean, my mom, she's just an energizer bunny. I don't know. They just keep going. And, you know, car accidents, cancers, heart attacks. My dad has been through everything. So, Again, uh, this this man's father survived all those kids he will definitely <laughs> how many kids definitely yet? outlive seven. a lot of us seven i'm the youngest of seven yeah yeah, yeah see yeah. You, know, you can survive yeah. that many kids well, you're gonna have a long life the kids know, can't so, kill you cancer ain't got no chance you know what's <laughs> always funny is uh we we be we kidding because my dad coached so long and he, what he was known for is he was known for his full court teams that just went up and down and pressed you from the beginning and and ran and and put put the pressure on you but he was also known um, to really only ever go seven deep. Some teams he only went to the bench once deep and he, he played guys hard and he practiced them hard and he got them in. But when it was um, real 32 minute against a game that's going to start from the wire and go down to the wire, I mean, he usually, so it was always funny. It was like, yeah, this is perfect. Law had a perfect team. He had his starting five and he was too deep on the bench with his kids. So it was like, that's, that's <laughs> literally how he coached. And he like, that was the house that he had. So it was kind of uh, funny. That's funny. So, so guys, it's Monday afternoon. We're just getting onto the radio. We're just getting onto YouTube, uh, all the different audio podcast platforms, and we'll be on television tonight. And we are in the seven mile casino studios, seven mile casino.com. I can't decide, like my ADHD is kicking in in a big way today. I can't decide if what we should do is like really jump all in on San Diego State because if the reports are true, this is a massive, massive story locally here in San Diego. And I think the story uh, reverberates throughout Southern California because USC and UCLA have been the biggest stars of collegiate sports in the region because of their history, their tradition, their name brand, and the conference that they've played in all along. The story of these two schools taking off for the bigger conference, although not geographically so, um, so but it's just, it's kind of hard just to get to where they're gonna have to yeah. go. San Diego State jumping in as one, not of two, but of one. I got to think there's another coming. I don't know. Maybe it is a Boise State. Maybe it is another school from the Mountain West Conference. I'm, I'm not sure at this point. But San Diego State jumping in as the Southern California representative of a conference that has always been, you know, West Coast based. This is such a monster story for San Diego State. And I can't decide if, if I think that football and the new stadium has a lot to do with it or if it's really more about the success of the basketball program uh, that I makes San Diego a, State that much more attractive to the Pac-12. What do you think, Brown? I think it has to be a combination of both. The men's basketball program has been one of the best teams, if not the best team in California for almost 15 to 20 years now. Now, in addition to that, you add this new stadium. So now they become a team where, whether you like it or not, until they're, the, until they're winning the conference, they're a team that you can bring in a conference and you can still get wins from as a, as a recruiting tool. 
all these players in Southern California hotbed, so you can still come down here and recruit kids. But I think what this will do, overall scheme of things, you have to add, me, my opinion, with San Diego State, you have to add Las Vegas. Because if you're adding San Diego State for a Southern California to keep that appeal, you now have to look at adding Las Vegas for the convention, for the nightlife, for the national appeal, for the, the every time we're doing something as a conference, our championship games are in Las Vegas. Like, that, like that's bomb. To me, that's bomb. If UCLA is out, if, if, if USC is out, you have to now have a, a shiny toy as a conference city, and Vegas would definitely be that. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, the Vegas' basketball team's no good anymore, right. and their football program is down and out, but they do play their football games in the Raiders' NFL stadium. So mm-hmm. if UNLV was playing against Oregon or Washington or you know the schools in the Pac-12 that are much more attractive, Stanford or whatever, right. Cal, I'm just making this stuff up. The point is, is that all of a sudden UNLV could – I'm not saying be good. I'm just saying that they'll have people who want to come see them play. Same goes for San Diego State. I mean, I've complained all year long that the new football stadium is great, but -hmm. the schedule sucks so bad nobody wants to go. Do you know that it was so bad that San Diego State – Oh, Jay. Jay, you ready for this? (laughs) It was so bad that San Diego State (laughs) lowered their ticket prices by 50% for their remaining home games. Did you know this? What? Oh, man. That's crazy. Did Somebody you guys not hear about tell this? Them it's not a, no, someone should tell them it's not about the we, price of the ticket, my man. Well, yeah. no, but think about what they're saying. They're saying, hey, look, our schedule is so unattractive that nobody's buying tickets, and we thought that there was this honeymoon that everybody's going to want to come see this new stadium all year long. No. The, the schedule is so bad, nobody wants to come to these games. So guess what? We'll lower our prices by 50%. I mean, that happened this past weekend. Why wouldn't they I just fork out that. a bunch to us? To give to listeners to do and say something, go out there and get people in the stadium to buy concessions and pay for parking. Because that's not what it's a. That's not the problem. The, no, look saying, at what people were paying. But here's the thing: goodwill. It's what, goodwill. Look, it's goodwill it is. to the community to say, "Hey, we got some free tickets. We're going to be giving them away all week long." Hey, you know what? It's goodwill, and you're still making some money on parking. People are still working. They still got to go point a flag for no reason to another guy to point a flag to a third person. That, that's I just needed the third person to point that flag. <laughs> there, it, you can't give the tickets away, whether they gave them to yeah. us or to somebody right. else, whether they handed them out on the street corner. You can't give the tickets away because the product's not good. Look at what people just pay for tickets at Petco and what they're going to pay next year for tickets at Petco because they've invested in that product. And so now mm-hmm. it's entertaining. The San Diego State football product is not an entertaining product of football to watch. Even when they were 11-1 and one or whatever they were, it wasn't entertaining to watch. Yeah, but... Wins but, and entertainment well, your point are is, different. Your, your point is right. Look, they don't play an entertaining brand of football. That's fine. But when they host this upcoming Saturday, San Jose State, I would mm. ask you guys, do you have other things going on on Saturday evening? Or do you say, you know what, honey? We got to go see San Diego State versus San Jose State because I got news for you. I, my my girlfriend is an alumni of San Diego State, and I would never be able to sell her on going to that game, even yeah. in a brand new football stadium, even in a suite mm-hmm. loaded up with food and beverage. She still ain't going to that. Brady Hoke's mm-hmm. wife probably won't go to that game. She'll probably <laughs> go like to pl- play cards with some lady friends or right. something like that. We are playing <laughs> pickleball. <laughs> when, when, exactly. <laughs> right. I, when, I, when San Diego State hosts Air Force on November 26th, that's the same weekend as Thanksgiving. You know, there might be a lot of people in town for Thanksgiving or there might be people heading out of town. Bottom line is, hey, you guys want to go see Air Force versus San Diego State? It's like, no, 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 not really. Nope. Rather spend a third straight day with my family. And I'll tell you guys, (laughs) um, I was up Saturday night up at this uh, USC Cal game. And look, it's not like Cal is Oregon or Utah or UCLA for that matter. But I will tell you, like the feel of big time college football. You know, the stadium is filled. There's fireworks going off. Every time USC scored, the lights up at the top of the stadium would flicker USC. USC would come across the lights um, that were lighting up the field. The, the presentation 
and the quality of the game and the massive crowd and the look, feel, and smell of college football. That's why I went up to USC on Saturday to see a game up there. Um, San Diego State versus San Jose State is just not a good game. And so now imagine replacing San Jose State with Cal and Stanford yes. and Arizona yes. and Arizona State and Washington and Washington State. I mean, this is what I've been griping about and complaining about for so many years that the conference lets them down because nobody cares about these teams. But if all of a sudden San Diego State's home schedule was Arizona State, Oregon, um, Utah, and Washington, you, now all of a sudden you're going to get 33,000 people every single cooking. Saturday night when San Diego State is home because the competition and the conference is something that people will be interested in. And in addition to that, if you don't fill it up, they will. Oregon will travel here. Cal will travel. Like, you'll get teams traveling here to fill this thing up one way or another. So, I, for me, this is what I've been clamoring for, but I wanted it from a basketball standpoint. Because now you start getting lottery picks playing San Diego State in San Diego State. I'm, but I'm in board. I'm on board. I'm on board 100%. This is going to change the recruits they get for football, and it's definitely going to raise their profile. So now you might be able to get an SEC team, SEC or an ACC team to come here and play. You'll be able to get some of those Big Ten teams to come here and play. Like, because now you're a Pac-12 team, and you're not a Mountain West team. Yep. And they and they should lead with them as the as the reason, you know, the bigger. They should lead with that basketball program and Dutcher out front and – you know, have to move to more of a progressive style of football going into this conference. And maybe if it means taking some lumps, but you're changing an offense that's going to attract big players. And, you know, maybe you have to go start Chip Kelly style at UCLA, but hey, they're not there anymore. And neither USC is a perfect move to do a lot of things like that. Well, I mean, listen, think about this in San Diego County this year, you have a high school quarterback at Carlsbad yeah. that just mm -hmm. committed to Alabama. You've got a tight end on the same team that just committed to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And there's a running back from Lincoln that I think committed to LSU. I think I'm not hundred percent mm -hmm. positive. My point is, is that I'm only giving you three guys that have come up with like big time scholarships. Um, if you are a PAC 12 team in a new stadium and you're going to be playing not on the CBS sports network, but you're going to be playing on Saturday against Oregon on Fox Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when you're that quarterback from Carlsbad that's going to Alabama, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're going to San Diego State. I'm just saying at least there's reason to have a discussion. Yeah, you, you're in the discussion. And for this a long a no time, from a, from a recruiting standpoint, you were not in a discussion. That's it. Just get in the discussion. Get yourself in the room. And you never know what sways these kids. You never know what sways them. You might find the quarterback that is nationally ranked that wants to stay home and play quarterback in the Pac-12. Now you're rolling. Because all you need to you just need one to start it. You need one kid to start it because you have them for three years. This isn't basketball where if you got a local kid, you got Chase Budinger to play for the for the Aztecs, and then he's gone after a year. You get one of these kids, they're there for three years. So you have some time to develop in them and, and to kind of start the groundwork for your for your for your university. Amazing. I mean, this report. I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm shocked by it. Like when USC and UCLA said they're going to the big 10, that was shocking that day. Yeah. There's been so yeah. much talk about San Diego state to the PAC 12 and so much speculation about why they add value to the PAC 12 that I can't say that I'm necessarily shocked, but um, it was, it was definitely news that came from kind of left field earlier today. When this thing, uh, when this thing kind of went out. So, hey, look, we got a lot more to get to. San Diego State to the Pac-12 lead story. Wasn't expecting that today. With as much craziness as there was in college football this weekend, with what happened yesterday around the NFL, um, the World Series coming to an end, Grande's wedding yesterday. I mean, there was just so much other stuff that I intended on us getting to, and then earlier in the day, the news, or at least the report that San Diego State is going to go to the Pac-12. So we'll, we'll we'll stay on that for a little while. Glad everybody's here. Man, I'm telling you, Alex's wedding yesterday. I'll talk about it as the day goes on. I, I can't decide if I want to show any videos from his wedding. <laughs> I didn't, Jay, I didn't post any videos from yeah. his wedding last night. I posted a couple of pictures, you know. Everything looked classy from what you know I've seen so far. It all looked on the up and up. But oh, uh, was, are you saying was, there's so are you saying there's some incriminating say videos? Video. I was no. the videos for him. 
Yeah, I don't. It's it's not that I that there was anything in there that was bad. It's just like I haven't talked to Alex. Like, hey, do you mind if we show some videos from your wedding yeah. on the show? So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to him for later in the week. Sure. All right, look, we're just getting started. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. J Law is filling in for Alex this week, so it's me, J Law, Brown Man, and uh, we got a ton to get to. Stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew. Great friends, what's happening? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Grande, though, on a little honeymoon this week. And that means comedian Jason Lawhead is filling in for Grande. And Jay Law himself is just back from a European vacay. Jay, I think, and I I I think that going to Europe mm -hmm. in like the October, November range is the best thing to do. Not that I've ever done it, but from what I understand, that's when you get flights at the best rates. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the American dollar right now is very strong uh, compared oh. to the euro. So things are much cheaper. At least this is what I'm reading. And I'm seeing some people like you that have gone over there. How, how was it? I mean, it, it, everything you just said and then heightened. And uh, yeah, it is. The weather's amazing, especially in the Barcelona, that coastal area of where the kind of the Mediterranean starts out in there. And um, they had a, a, an unseasonably hot summer, so it's carried over into a warm, warm fall for them. And yeah, you know, we did uh, our honeymoon Italy in October, a little earlier in the middle or part. But yeah, the peak season of summer travels over. Um, everything's kind of kicked weird for them since COVID, since they've opened. They're not even really seeing a decline season right now. They're starting to see travel. And there was, man, there was a place was teeming. Barcelona was just so vibrant. And, and the, I mean, just we had an unbelievable time just stumbling in and out of places. We had a few things planned, but then we were like, you know, we're just going to stumble along. And, you know, there's some if we get to these neighborhoods, you jump on the trains. It's kind of embarrassing, like when you look at these ancient cities and you're like the, the infrastructure and the tunnels and the roads and the public transportation they have and the different ways you can get around these amazing cities. And uh, you're like, oh, geez. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, you know, it really is. You're like, oh, my gosh. And the airports. Well, and hey, Jay, how, my, how underst my understanding is that uh, I, I was talking to I have a friend of mine who's spending some time over in, in Italy right now. Mm -hmm. um, and his kids are back off in college. And he had this dream of spending like three months in Italy. He I, said he's been planning it for 20 years. I and he's been sending me pictures. And he's like, guess how much this meal cost? Yeah. So oh, I that's write, another thing. Yeah, I would write back and I go, um, I don't know, based on what I'm seeing on the table, I don't know, uh, $50 a person. He's like, try $8.50. Like he said, you cannot imagine right now how you inexpensive things are in Europe compared to the United States. You can't imagine. And my Barcelona is very much like tapas. So it's small plates, you know? So, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, we go in there, I get a couple of pints of San Miguel. My wife gets like an Aperol spritz. We get like eight, nine, different, 10 different plates of different type of style stuff and all this stuff. And we're having, and yeah, you get the bill and it's like 38, 25 euro. And you're like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like this would have been in San Diego in the, in, in little Italy, this would have been 140, 100, you know, 110, $115 of just like everything added up, you know? And you're like, what? Yeah. This is insane. And we yeah, so you have no get we got over there cheap. We stayed I, my I booked a Hilton, uh not that close to the airport, but but a nice route close to the airport when you'd consider Barcelona, close to a train station. We got everywhere. I got that Hilton at 63 euro a night. Wow. Um, okay, and then uh what and about, it was beautiful, like, it was nice uh, free breakfast, cooked breakfast every morning, you know, better your those hotel food breakfasts are so much better in Europe. How about um, flights though? How much were flights to go over to Spain? We we spent um round trip uh not even seven hundred per ticket. Per round trip. How about that, Browner? LAX I mean, to Barcelona, Barcelona back to LAX. We spent we were all, uh, we were all jacked up on the time change, so you gain so you're in eight time zones coming home, but it's a 17 hour flight because you're going against the jet stream. So, but it, but you land like it's only been about eight hours of the day. For those well, of you who don't know, the Euro price is just $63 in, in American dollars. You know, some people are like, what is that in American dollars? Right. 63 Euro 63. is what? $100 American? No, it's like, no, like right now it's pretty even it. as far as I know, but $63. I mean, it's, it's $63. How about this? Yeah. How about this? Seven hundred dollars per flight. It costs me more to fly to Pittsburgh right now than it yeah. does to uh, fly from LAX to Barcelona. 
when I bought those That's flights, cool. I was going to St. Louis. This was in, uh, we decided we were going to do this for my 50. Because at first, here's what, I, it was all at the start of the, the inflation. Because when we, I first looked, we were talking, we went to Hawaii for hers last February for her 35th. And I was like, you know what, where, where are we going to, let's go to maybe Cabo. I looked at this flight. I went, all right, let's go to maybe Cabo. We'll shoot it. My parents got like a, a, a timeshare. Maybe we can get it for just a cleaning fee. We'll go to Cabo. Flight. I looked at Cabo. I looked at the flights. I was like, wait, this is insane from san diego so I, I said at this price we could probably go to europe i literally just said that out loud i typed to barcelona i go i talked that barcelona is our next trip i went this is insane i started doing more research i went to my hilton honors program i was like five different uh hiltons in town i was like this one's a great one it's right by the it's like a you know one bus to the from the airport and then we have a train stop right there 63 euro a night five six nights at a hilton and then we just flew to we just bought separate tickets and flew to Majorca uh, for a day and just spent the day in Majorca, earliest morning flight out. And we took the last flight back. There's a flight every hour and it takes 20 minutes and they're just going back and forth on every airline. And um, it was awesome. We spent like 12 hours in Majorca. It was amazing. Dude, I am, uh, I, I got to find a time and it's always football season. So it never really works out, right. but like, like October, November, to go to Europe. And from what I was, I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day who it's actually, a long season cap. We'll I know. Just take a little nip out of it. I, I, and hey, it's my, my birthday's every year on that crazy weekend. It's always the world series. There's always great college football. There's always great NFL. The NBA's just started. So, but I've had to live with that my whole adult life. And I've never been a big birthday guy where I've run, you know, done much. And then, I was like, listen, I'm 50, you're 50. When we came up with a funny thing in our house, my wife and I was like, yo, fo, you're only 51. So we got to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, we were hashtagging yo, fo. I was did it a couple of times, but like, yeah, man, you know, so we were just like, hey, and especially everything, you know, we've gone through in the world. You just want to be like, you know what? Experiences, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go, ah, I should have did that one. And then just go work hard and then wait for the next one, you know? Yeah. I know I was talking to a buddy of mine who lives here in San Diego, but he spends half the year in Switzerland now because that's where his wife is from. He was telling me the other day, he's like, dude, we've never seen what's happening in Switzerland. Like what's going on right now? I'm yeah. like, what? what's happening? He's like, every restaurant we go to is jam packed and everybody is speaking English because it's all Americans that are visiting right now yeah. because, um, you know, people were cooped up for a couple of years. Then the government fed everybody a whole bunch of money. And um, right now the money is such that you can get there cheaper, which mm -hmm. I know sounds ridiculous because like I'm telling you, I spent a thousand dollars on a flight to Pittsburgh. Um, so mm -hmm. you can get there cheaper. And while you're there, the American dollar is so strong that more and more Americans are going right now. And so, um, dude, I am extremely close, but I'm going to press you on this. You ready? Right. And, and tell me if you'll share this with everybody. Okay. Cause most people are like, dude, I can never go to Europe. It's too expensive. And flying is expensive. It's, and it's ridiculous. And hotels are expensive. It's, it's and biggest, Airbnb is expensive nope. and, and restaurant. Everything's cost so much money. Yeah. How long were you there? How, how long was your trip? So with travel, we were there six days. Okay. Six days. Um, and grand total, if you can, just round yeah. number. All because right. people, because people will learn from Easy. this and they'll go, wait, it was that inexpensive? E Easy. I just told you, uh, 63 euro a night um, for the hotel with ever their, whatever their, you know, taxes are. So hotel was uh, 460 euro total with okay. everything. And okay. uh, I even put a few charges at their little bar on it. So 464, I think, was the total. All right. Uh, flights were the flights were six so round trip they were like 662 and then i did add um for just i just bought uh you know you buy your own seats after that and you can get l bigger leg room so i bought two extra seats with bigger leg room so i added another 100 each on that to go that way on the sleep ride home but okay. um um the and then all way. in on like food and everything else. Cause you're food, already about 2,100 bucks food. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, we, we did some, we did some stuff, uh, you know, like, um, the, 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 the church, the park well, and the Gaudi exhibit museum and a few things like that. But after that, I mean, those things, if we just stayed in Barcelona, <laughs> if we didn't did my, do my orca, let's just say we stayed in Barcelona because that's, let's say we, we treated ourselves. Okay. So um, once everything else was so cheap, we were like, well, let's treat ourselves in this, in these areas that we can afford to now. So um, I would say Barcelona, da, 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 
uh, you know, under four grand. Oh, easily, easily. I was just going to say maybe a little over three, Dude, maybe a little this? over three. And we ate and drank good. Like I said, and you know, we trains are cheap. 10, you could buy a 10, 10 spot on the, uh, 10 rides for eight seventy five euro on the, and you just buy a couple of those. Even if you don't use the second card of them, it, that's so inexpensive. You don't even see that money gone. It's how about that Browner Browner. How, can you imagine you and a guest a week in Spain under $3,500. Yeah. So I'm to get you. there according. And so Jason basically got there with 1100 bucks. So if you got 1100 bucks saved up somehow, you can at least get there and stay. What do you mean? He's got 1100 bucks. What are you talking about? Cause the flight 662, the hotel right. 460. Right. So no, no. So you get the, the flight is 700 so the, per person. The so it's was under, seven, under, under 700 per oh, person. Oh, per person. Right? Yeah. 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 14, per, under oh. 700 per person. Yeah. No, so that's got, still a steal though. That's right, like, dude, I, I, right. I went to St. Louis and had to stop in Denver this year and, and paid well more than that for the round trip. Dude, and, you got $1,400 in flights. You got $500 in hotel. Um, you got another, you know, thousand dollars of dining and, you know, sightseeing and additional flight. I mean, dude, he's all in under $3,500 for a week in Europe for his birthday. And you get meals on these flights. You get cocktails. You get dessert, you know, on the overnight and the flights back. You know, they, they come up and down the aisles. You get to see. So you get some pretty deep, even in economy with a little extra leg room that doesn't cost much. It's still way more comfortable than any any coach on any flight. You'll fly domestically here. And uh, yeah, I, I just pop like a half a Tylenol PM or, a you know, I, you know, ibuprofen <laughs> PM. I put the you get I a put gummy these, from Tori Holistics, I, bro. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to ride internationally with those. The last thing travel, I you don't yeah, want that I, like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't going Britney on that one. So, uh, <laughs> well, you know, we don't be wearing a free Jason T-shirts on the show. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, listen, I, 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 we slept and we both slept and traveled pretty well, really well on the way there. We were right. We were kind of, we were right on uh, Barcelona time, kind of right early, and we didn't have much of a hitch in any of that. And getting back was a little foggy the day to two after, and then I did a show. Friday night in Tustin and I was just still kind of like punchy and everything, but it, it went well. And I talked about the trip on stage. It was funny about like how I got, I don't care. However, you know, I talked about the euros weakness and I got, I don't care. However strong the Euro ever gets, it'll never be stronger than that body odor over there. What is going on? All the things <laughs> that they've made, all the, all the advances that they've come from these ancient cities, they got modern transportation. I did all this stuff. I was doing all, you know, architecture, the things they've been, but I mean, they can't get a stick at the owner and over here. I mean, it's a good thing. These trains run on time. Cause you're like, I can't wait to get off this thing. Oh my God. Let's just take this stuff. We'll walk the rest of the way. <laughs> Uh, it's great. Jason yeah. Lawhead is in this week for Grande Alejandro. It's Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. If you're just getting with us, earlier today, a breaking news story, and I'll give all the credit to where it came from. Dan Patrick on his national radio show said earlier today that he has been told that the Pac-12 is about to extend an invitation to San Diego State. And for those of you that have been around our show for the last 20 plus years, no matter how good San Diego State football has ever been, uh, it's never been able to really grasp, I believe, the community because the schedule has always been so bad and the conference has always been so bad that the San Jose States of the world the Hawaii's of the world, you know, all of these schools that none of us have any interest in seeing, they built a brand new football stadium thinking they'd have this thing jam packed all season long. And you can't change the fact that the mountain West stinks. The schedule is no good. And San Diego state found themselves so desperate in football this past weekend that according to the reports, they lowered their ticket prices for the remaining home schedule by 50%. Imagine if you bought season tickets at $100 per ticket and now they're selling the seat right next to you at $50 a ticket because San Diego State's athletic department has come to the realization nobody's coming to our games because nobody's interested in the opponent. And on top of that, San Diego State has not played an entertaining brand of football so far this year. But going from the Mountain West to the Pac-12, which I've always dreamt for San Diego State, Get into the same conference with USC, UCLA, Cal, Stanford, Washington, Washington State, Arizona, Arizona State, schools that are regionally uh, attractive. Yes, it's true. USC and UCLA are going to bail. But 
San Diego State becomes the team of Southern California. And granted, you know, USC and UCLA are going to be the schools that you're going to see playing on television when you're in LA. But San Diego State might all of a sudden find themselves playing against Oregon and not having to go head to head against USC or UCLA and playing in the LA market on television. So from a football perspective, this could not be better. From a basketball perspective, San Diego State, guys, we've all been to a lot of San Diego State basketball games. Yep. They play a great brand of basketball. They play a winning brand. They've got a couple yep. of Sweet 16 appearances. If it wasn't for COVID a couple of years ago, who knows? Maybe they actually did have a Final Four caliber team. But basketball-wise, to now have Oregon come to town and Washington come to town and replace San Jose State, or you know any of these other Mountain West schools that Arizona. none of us have ever had. Yeah, Air Force. Arizona, Arizona State. Like these are good basketball programs. Like Arizona's been one of the best teams in the country for a long run now. And if you're gonna start getting them in your building repeatedly, for a bad from a basketball perspective, a purely basketball perspective, this will take San Diego State from a a every now and then show up in the tournament. This could take them to a national powerhouse for basketball because they've always had a good program. They've just never been able to continuously get the, the top 15, top 10 recruit. So now in this conference, if you can routinely get one of these top 10, top 15 guys every cycle, woo! Now you I, could. I agree. I agree to a sense because now this is a this is the move. This is the move to make, and it's the right move to make at the right time, even for the football program. And maybe the football program has to look at going, hey, we're going to have to go take our lumps to grow up in this conference, but we're going to have to go do it with an, a progressive offense so we can try to get some of this top-tier talent that might be slipping away because we're not going to be able to run between the tackles. And even with the USC and UCLA gone out of this conference, we're, we're not going to be able to. So, the, And then the basketball program – is fit to get as close as they can possibly to, to jump on what John just said about a national powerhouse, but at least to get as close to a, a move as Gonzaga's made, right? And, yep. and to be able to be a, a, a strong centerpiece in this conference with what's left, it's still great, right? Like, you know, UCLA obviously did blossom lately into, uh, you know, their own again. But those two programs haven't done much for the conference over the long haul basketball wise. So they're really not replacing much when they go replace in basketball. They've got a big, tall order in football. Um, but yeah, that conference schedule every week, all the time, even the teams that are down because they might be young and their losses look bad. You know, it's still Cal at Cal. It's still Oregon State at Oregon State and, or whoever it might be. And um, yeah, this could turn that program into the kind of silent killer that a, a Butler became once and, and Gonzaga has held on to for a long time. So uh, I, I think this move is, has to be done. And it, you know, this is the time to do it. Why go in when UCLA and USC are still part of it? That well, they're not stupid. invited. Yeah. They're not yeah. invited when USC and UCLA right. are part right. of it. Right. Well, I'm just saying like, even if they were, why do that? That would be to me a, a, a silly move. This is the move. This is just, um, it, the, 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 the way is paved and just go do it. And, you know, you're like you said, even if you're bad at first, those schools are going to be in your football stadium. And maybe if you kind of go and, and start directing the football program for, for a while, you know, any, there's always a place for somebody in conferences. If you can go out and recruit the guys and, you know, Oregon state will have their uprisings, Arizona state will have their little uprisings and they'll have a couple of classes that, that are they're there and they'll have to go do that again. And, San Diego State may have to be that in football, but it's a right move. Well, listen, again, think about this from a football perspective. In, and I, I'm just looking at the conference. You know, when you when you think about the Mountain West, here's who's coming into town. Air Force and Colorado oh. State and Fresno no. State and Nevada no. and New Mexico, San Jose State, UNLV, Utah State, Wyoming. None of those schools have ever been interesting to a San Diego sports fan. No. Not even the Air Force, and this is a military town, right? But because it's the Air Force, right? It's the Navy. Marines and the Navy ain't going. Right. These guys like it's the Air Force. But when, but when San Diego State is hosting Arizona State, or Cal, Colorado, Oregon, Stanford, Utah, Washington, when those kinds of schools are coming in for home games for San Diego State on a Saturday night, you're seeing San Diego State versus Washington. You're like, 
yeah, San Diego State versus Washington, that's a game I think I'd like to go to versus San Diego State versus San Jose State. Yeah. I mean, I really... And if there's a day where San Diego State's good enough and a Stanford's coming down or, you know, uh, a Washington's coming down or an Oregon's coming down, there's a college game day there. There's, the, you know, this, the hotels are filling. And and I think with the Pac-12 losing those two big market eaters up there, they're looking at San Diego also as a market to go, this is a market we can exploit, you know? Browner, what, do you, what is this big grin on your face? We got about a... We got to hustle to get to this break. What, what's what's this big smile? What's Yo, this big grin? Breaking news: Jim Irsay has now hired Jeff Saturday as the interim head coach. Well, Bro, yeah, this. What this is, well, I, I was going to get there. Wow. This. Well, wait, hold on. This happened earlier today. The Colts mm -hmm. fired Frank Reich as their head coach, and they decided to go with Jeff Saturday, a former a Colts joke. center, and a guy who's had a consulting relationship to the organization. But Not most coaching. people, most people know him from his work on ESPN. Now you're laughing at this, but I'm going to tell you when we come back why this is not, in my opinion, just some joke. Like I actually think that you can make a case as to why this is a good move for the Colts. We'll get there. We got a lot of stuff to get to today. A lot of news that was breaking. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends. We welcome you back on a Monday afternoon. It's Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We're on all the different platforms, radio on 1090, television on Cox Your View, all the different audio podcast platforms, and to all of our YouTube viewers and listeners out there, we appreciate you guys. The Chatlins get involved in the chat. And uh, and make sure that you're subscribing to our YouTube channel because we're trying to get to 7,500 subscribers by the end of the year. As a matter of fact, um, just so you guys know, Grande's wedding was last night, and that puts Jason Lawhead right in the Grande chair. Uh, Browner, real quick, before we, we get back to what's going on with uh, San Diego State and with the Colts firing their coach and hiring their consultant, I want to get into all these stories. This past weekend, fellas, um, Friday night, you guys will love this. Me and Browner on Friday night went to go out and support <laughs> our man Tommy Tommy who has completed a stand-up comedy class okay. and then put on a stand-up comedy show at the, the Point Loma Playhouse. So Browner and I, we know that Tommy Tommy is one of the all-time great supporters of this show. He goes to I Thrive for, for intravenous, you know, like vitamins. He goes to Tory Holistics to get all of his cannabis products. I mean, he plays cards at Seven Mile Casino. The list goes on and on. So Browner and I, there's that picture up on the screen right now after the show. And uh, Browner, I have been encouraging you and Jason Lawhead here with us today to let Tommy Tommy be the first opening act of one of your shows. Brown, what is Tommy Tommy going to have to do to get on the bill to open up a Browner Lawhead comedy show? What's he going to have to do, Brown? Uh, listen, I would... <laughs> Jason is a far so, better yeah. eye for talent than I am, and 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 he the setting up of a show and things of that nature. I would totally leave, put that at the feet, leave it to, hand it off, have whatever term you want to use to to. But Jason's got to see him first. Yeah, I got to see him. Like, do you think like just? I'll give you just a couple of questions, and uh, you know, just to see. Do you think um, at least just off of your you know, evaluation. Do you think he, he has the, like, could go up being called up, grab the mic. Hello, everybody get them going for like a first no. comedian. No. no. Yes. Okay. No, yes, I no. do. No. Yes, I do. Like, hey, everybody, how's it going? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, Tom, I'm Tommy, Tommy, da, da, da. you know, like get I'm that. Wait, are, you asking, you. are you saying, are you, you saying can he host? Yeah. Can no. he get out there and just grab that mic and just start going where people aren't like, whoa, or, you know, where they're like, oh, no. okay, and then he can go talk to him like that, you know, like in, as a first comedian. No. All right, right? hold on. What, Brown, are no, you I'll, saying I'll, no? I'm going to tell you this, and this is going to be uh, – uh, Scott will agree to this. Jason, this will bring the perfect picture for what I think he would be fantastic at. So when we did the comedy store the first time, that black guy came up in that big old outfit, and I was like, oh, yeah. what – yeah, yeah, Tommy yeah, could, yeah. Tommy Evo, could do right. what that guy did for five <laughs> to seven minutes. All right, yeah. And so Jay, it, Tommy was good. He was good, but it's jarring. 
It's Jay, awesome. Okay. He's hilarious. It's it's jarring. Okay. It's Jason. Jarring. That's all well, I that you know what? Jason. All I needed was and I'm yeah. glad you shared everything because that made me laugh. It, the comparison, but all I need was jarring. All right. So Jay, here's what Tommy Tommy needs. He needs you, a professional stand-up <laughs> comedian for 25 years. <laughs> uh -huh. He needs you hey, to see him old, work. But yeah. All right. He needs you to see him 20. work. How 20 years, 25 years, whatever. <laughs> I, he needs you, you need to see him work and you need to coach him up a little bit. Because he's an energetic guy. All he, five minutes. That's it. You give him five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Five from minutes. five from five minutes of Tommy into 15, 20 minutes of Browner okay. into the full show with the headliner Jay Law. So congratulations to Tommy. Tommy, we love you. Yeah, buddy. man, that's awesome that he went out and did it, dude. And and then and that he. Uh, so congrats, Tommy. Uh, you know, I'm. I was just uh, wanting to know how you did, and uh, everybody said you did great. So if you're listening. He's my he new did. Facebook friend anyway. He, he, he did. He, he, yeah. He did great. And he by the way, great. me and Browner, me and Browner great. started the night at a place in Point Loma called the Harbor Town Pub. And then okay. we went back to the Harbor Town Pub because they have on their menu the waterfront Woo! sliders, dude. Okay. The waterfront sliders are like the best little slider burgers in San Diego. And I don't know if they're affiliated. I don't know if they're like the same owners or what, but they actually call them the waterfront sliders on their menu. And those they things are bomb. Yeah, if they're not the same company. They should sue them because they're right. just as good. That's yeah. definitely a ripoff. All right, so that was so that was Friday night. A lot of drinking, by the way, when you're going to see a comedy show. That was Friday night. Saturday mm -hmm. night, I mentioned to you that I I ran up to L.A. on Saturday evening. I went to see USC versus Cal. I know John, uh, you had a picture that we may have brought up on the screen earlier, but I was there with Mike Bone, who is the athletic director of USC, who is the former San Diego State athletic director. I've known him for 20 years. Really good friend of mine. The other gentleman that you're seeing in the picture is Chris Morales, who uh, a lot of people will know because he is the voice of ESPN LA. And Chris is a big USC fan. So the three of us and, and a few other people were in the uh, athletic director's suite on Saturday night. I'll tell you guys right now, you talk about a spread of food. O-M-F-G. <laughs> they put on such a spread at USC. And I'm talking like in the community areas. Like there's all these luxury suites. And outside the suites, there's shrimp. And and uh, crab legs and uh, stone crab crab legs. And, oh, bro, let me tell you something. I could have eaten five hundred dollars worth of food the, that night, you know. And then they got what? little slider burgers in the suite, and they got sandwiches, and they got beers. And I mean, dude, I'm. And by the way, I was in this suite where if you were an SC, um, if you were an SC dignitary, you're. This is the suite that you're in. Carson Palmer, Anthony Munoz, um, uh, Lendale White. Uh, what's the linebacker's name from San Francisco? The kid, he's kind of like um, Polynesian with the long hair that sticks out of his head, uh, out of his helmet. That guy was in there. Uh, I'm, like, if you were a former USC football player and a former USC great, this is the suite that you were in. OJ? Was OJ there? I didn't see OJ. No. Okay. I did not see He OJ. was cutting. He was slicing some meat on the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's in the back. He's right. in the back. Right. He's in the slicer. Right. <laughs> um, and then last night, uh, we all went to um, we went to Alex's wedding, which was mm -hmm. small and quaint. Uh, but man, John, I'll tell you, you, you tell me what you think. You talk about like a loving wedding. J Law, you had to see me. I was bawling my eyes out during the actual oh. ceremony. Oh, that's cute. It was so beautiful. This is a picture you can see. I know it's not the greatest picture, but Browner's on one side. Um, then me. I'm the fat guy. Then Rachel. <laughs> Uh, then Alex, who's now the skinny guy, thanks to iThrive. Uh, then Mariana, then Linda Welby and her husband, Austin, they hosted the actual ceremony at their home, which overlooks Point Loma. And let me tell you something, man. It Oof. was awesome. And then when everybody left to go down to the Intercontinental in downtown San Diego, which is where the, the actual party was, which I didn't even know we had an Intercontinental in downtown San Diego. Everybody left to go to the wedding. Me and Browner and uh, Rachel and Linda and Austin all went downstairs to their bar at their house. And dude, we started putting it together. We started to craft that buzz on a Sunday afternoon. And then, you know, we Ubered over to the hotel and everything. But Brown, how great was this wedding, man? Dude, the wedding was bomb. Check this out. So here's a view Ooh. of what it looks like from the house. Just yeah, they're, next they're level. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, from their they're house, redoing man. their pool there. Yeah, the house is beautiful. Yeah. Now, by the way, that that view, Brown, uh, were those the sunglasses that I was wearing? Those those Ray Bans yeah. with the cameras in them. That's right. That's right, man. That's them camera Ray Bans. That picture is crisp. 
Yeah. I really edited nice. the video and cut the sound now so people didn't hear our conversation. But yeah, dude, the, the glasses were bomb. The house was just unbelievable. I told you and then I told uh, Linda as well, this is the perfect house to not have children in. Like <laughs> yeah. it, the house is just utterly spectacular, man. They scored a unbelievable uh, fine with that house. Yeah, it is awesome. So congratulations mm -hmm. to Grande and to Mariana. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy your, your few day, like mini honeymoon. This guy, let me yeah. tell y'all about this. Let me, cause I was there. I'm going to tell y'all how the crying started. So when he comes on this show, cause I talked to him about this last night and I gave him all the props in the world. He was holding strong when the wife was giving vows. Alex began to cry which made this fool over here cry oh, when he cute. started talking I'm about how much he loved her and how they met and, and what led to them getting to where they were at. And it was a very sweet, it was a very genuine, authentic moment. And right. it, it, nobody was, no one was really teary eyed. I mean, it was an emotional ceremony, but nobody really got started breaking up until Alex started breaking up. And then yeah. his wife started breaking up. Then the mom started crying. And then this guy <laughs> next to me starts crying like he's the mom. And I was like, geez, what's going on? All right. Linda's crying. That's She's crazy. reaching for tissues. And it oh, was man. everybody was holding their water, man, until Alex started losing. Because you could see him when it was like it was happening. It was getting real. And, and he could see himself in that moment. He just started to break down. Yeah, and, and it was that's awesome. Man. Well, I that's mean, awesome Linda, to hear, man. Linda feels yeah. like she's like you know, kind of momish, and uh -huh. I definitely feel like I'm kind of daddish to Alex. Right. I mean, just in a little way. And uh, I just was so happy for the guy, and I just to see him as happy as he was, um, and to hear the story about how they met, and you know, Thursday crazy. nights at on the border, and Alex is the engineer because the radio station is too damn cheap to hire an engineer, so he has to learn how to do it, and how they wind up meeting because she's the hostess and he's the engineer for the radio show. It just was adorable. It was awesome. And I'm just so happy for those guys. And anyway, we'll, we'll talk. I think Linda's going to stop. That's awesome the show to later. hear, man. Yeah. That's great. That's hey, great. Hey, listen, I want to get back to where we left off, though. Uh, just before we had hit the last break, uh, Browner had talked about breaking news from earlier in today, which was that Frank Reich was fired as a head coach <laughs> of the Indianapolis Colts, and they've hired Jeff Saturday as their interim head coach. And Browner's laughing at this move because Jeff nope. Saturday is known as an ESPN you know, a uh, football commentator. He's not known as somebody who's been working as a coach inside the NFL. But I'm going to tell you in just a minute why maybe we should not be laughing at this move. And I'll get there in just one second before I do. Hey, guys, I want to just mention our friends at PenskeSanDiego.com. So for the last couple of years, we've been working directly with Mazda of Escondido, but Mazda of Escondido is a Penske dealership. And we've had a lot of success. Um, not only have I bought three cars from Mazda of Escondido, but we've had a lot of listeners go to Mazda of Escondido and get cars with immediate delivery and save a lot of money. Well, when Browner and I were at Lexus San Diego a few months ago with the Padres, everybody's like, why are you guys endorsing a Lexus thing? Or why are you guys doing an appearance at a Lexus thing when you guys are endorsing the Mazda dealership? It's all part of the same family. And I think everybody at Penske kind of came to this conclusion like, We've got Kaplan and crew advertising just Mazda of Escondido. We got 12 stores around San Diego County. And we got all these brands. So why don't we just have them push everybody to PenskeSanDiego.com rather than just simply to Mazda of Escondido. So here goes. If you're looking for an Acura, an Audi, a BMW, a Honda, Lexus, Mini, Mazda, Mercedes, and Toyota, all of these brands, there are Penske dealerships all over San Diego County. Shop PenskeSanDiego.com. That's PenskeSanDiego.com. Jay, you see, maybe now we've got a hookup for you at Mercedes when your car breaks down. Yeah, I might have to. Uh, I might have to go look at their the service department. What kind of what kind of a uh, code do I need? A code to get into the service department? <laughs> no I, code. I'm no. often in the service department. I'm never Help. really in sales or on the floor <laughs> as much as I'm in the service department. I know a lot of the service department guys. I brought donuts to service department guys. My cars. I, I've been on so long, and uh, no, I used to do a joke where if I had a nickel for every time my check engine light was on, I'd have enough money to buy an electric vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you need service, you'll call Bill Hagen. He'll right. talk to the Mercedes dealership at go. Penske. And Browner's looking for an electric car, but he got to get through the baby mama drama before he can get himself. A I'll new tell car. you what, I I, I drove my first I drove my first all EV car um, on the island of Majorca, a little Fiat, fully charged, unbelievable. I got a 
a, I got a Hertz rental car for like 40 bucks, an electric vehicle. You don't have to put gas in it. You just drive it around for the day. It was, it was great. And it was, it was cool, man. It was a little adjusting to it in the beginning, like with the gas and everything, the pedal. But once you do those little things and they're so easy to park, I, we had a blast. We just whipped around the Island on that thing all, all day. It was great. All right, let me do this. Let me, uh, let me get us into this conversation because, um, Browner laughed at the break in the last segment. The breaking news earlier today, we've been talking a lot about San Diego State. We'll get back to it. But this is interesting. Frank Reich, who was a former great, and I say great, backup NFL quarterback, one of the greatest comebacks in the history of the NFL when the Buffalo beat Bills beat the then Houston Oilers. So Jim Kelly gets hurt. Frank Reich comes in and beats Warren Moon and the Oilers. And it's like James Lofton and Andre Reid, and these guys go crazy in the second half, and they pull off one of the most shocking comebacks ever in NFL history. Frank Reich's the quarterback of that team. By the way, he also had another crazy comeback when he was at the University of Maryland, one of the all-time greatest comebacks in college football history as well. Frank was the offensive coordinator of the Chargers when they were in San Diego. A lot of us got to know Frank pretty well. He's a great guy. Hard to win in the NFL when every year you're changing quarterbacks. When your philosophy is, Philip Rivers one year, Carson Wentz the next year, Matt Ryan the next year. When you don't have consistency at the quarterback position, I don't know what Jim Irsay was thinking was going to happen this year. I know the Colts were kind of a popular pick in the preseason. Like, ooh, they may shock the world. But what shocked the world is how bad they are, number one. Then they bench Matt Ryan, and then they go with this second-year quarterback. And so they get smoked this past weekend. And Jim Irsay, who apparently was the, the, the decision maker to say, we got to bench Matt Ryan and we got to find out what we've got in this younger quarterback. He's now decided it's time to fire Frank Reich. Firing Frank Reich is one thing. Hiring somebody who's not currently on the staff, hiring someone who's not been a coach, not a head coach. I'm talking about an assistant coach. Ta bringing somebody from television into your organization to say, guys, I'm now the head coach. I was on ESPN yesterday, but today I'm, I'm having a staff meeting. I'm now the head coach. It seems completely, totally, utterly ridiculous to do this, particularly during the season, right? I mean, doesn't it? First of all, I want to tell y'all why I found this funny. This is utterly probably one of the dumbest things I've ever seen since I've been watching football. So is you mean because, to tell me is it because of who, or is it because of when I'm, I'm just curious why it's so stupid, because it's if I were stupid. to tell you, if I were to tell you in the off season that he had a complete off season to be the head coach, would, would it be as dumb or is it because it now, would not. here we are midway through the season, you're taking a guy from a television set and you're putting him into a, into a head coaching job. If Jeff Saturday sat down with Jim Irsay in, in June and just convinced him I can run this football organization as a head coach. Here's why. Here's what I would do with this quarterback. Here's what I would do with the, uh, Jonathan Taylor. Here's what I would do with our defense. Okay. you never been a head coach. I don't really care about that. The guy's are basically a Hall of Fame center. So you have to be smart to be center. You got to know the game. You got to see the game right in front of you because it happens really fast from that position. I got no problem with that. My problem is Jim Ursay is such a moronic owner that you took a guy so you skipped over this guy's entire coaching staff. Dudes who've been there since day one. You skipped over all those dudes to give it to a consultant who not coaching. He not coaching the team. He not. So you basically gave your friend the job. Basically. Basically. So the assistant, the head assistant coach, F him, the defensive coordinator, who I, I think they fired last week, brought in some other guy. F him, offensive coordinator. F him. Well, wait a oh, second. Jeff. I'm just, I'm just, wait. I'm, go, I'm just going through their staff right now. So Gus Bradley is on their site as their defensive coordinator, and he's been an NFL head coach, head coach. and has been yes. a longtime coordinator. Um, I'm just taking a look to see who else is is like here. That you know. Oh, <laughs> how about this? John Fox, a former NFL head coach, is a there senior defensive assistant. Um, I mean, he's just, a terrible I, head coach. But you just need to get to the end of the year. Well, you say he's a terrible head coach, but the guy did coach the Carolina Panthers to the Super Bowl. He, he won a Super. Didn't he win a Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos? 
Didn't uh, he win the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning? Was was John Fox the head coach of the Broncos that year? Who it was? I think he out. was. I think he won a Super Bowl. I'd have to really go. Like, who was Ben? Remember. Who was that coach? Because it wasn't Dan oh, Reeves or Mike it right Shanahan. Now. It was John Fox, and I think I, they fired him after that. I think. You know what? I I gotta say, I don't remember. I remember him taking the Carolina Panthers right long to the time Super Bowl, ago. Sure, and they they lost With to Jake the Patriots. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they lost to the Patriots. And but I mean, he coached, I think he coached them in the Super Bowl that they lost. Oh, uh, who was their Super Bowl, Super Bowl coach? Who who they know. win? Who they win? He coached the Panthers. I, oh, Gary Kubiak. Gary Kubiak won that Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah he never Gary, won the Super Bowl. Gary Kubiak was the coach of the Broncos. But but John Fox is on the Colts staff. Um, Gus mm -hmm. Bradley is on the Colts staff, and I'm just looking at the Colts website right now. And Jeff Saturday, his picture is there. He's now the interim head coach of the Colts, as <laughs> named earlier today. The only thing I'll say about it is this, and I know we're up against the break. Look, um, everybody ridiculed the 49ers when they hired John Lynch and they brought him out of the TV booth and they put him into the general manager position. And the totally 49ers different job. totally agreed. It's a totally different job. And I don't remember it happening mid season. <laughs> Jeff right. Saturday, in yeah. week 10. Yeah. I mean, it's I weird, man. Yeah, that's a weird move. It is. Strange. It's almost like it's like it's almost like what did Frank Reich do to everybody? It's almost like they brought in like the guy because like somebody you know molested somebody in the building, and it's just like this guy's gonna fix everything, you know? Yeah, I mean Frank Reich is like one of the what best did he guys. do? He's what like did he do to this nothing. team? He, did, he didn't brought win. in a guy that was on a TV show the day before, and like you said, it's not these guys have been in a locker room and on planes for months together. Frank Reich just didn't win. And um, and I, by the way, I don't blame Frank Reich for not winning. I blame Jim Ursay for the Colts yep. not winning because you there's no history that says when you change quarterback every year, but it's a veteran quarterback, that it works. There is no history yep. to show that that works. None. Zero. I like the Jeff Saturday move in a weird way because I think Jeff Saturday walks in as someone who's a, as you said, Browner, like, a, you know, he's a, he had a great career. He was Peyton Manning center. He knows the game as a TV mm -hmm. uh, announcer. He's been following it very, very closely. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds weird, but I, I actually kind of think it's interesting. I'm going to be curious to see what happens. Stick around. We got a lot more to get to lots from the NFL this weekend and back to the San Diego state move to the PAC 12. We'll get there. We're in the seven mile casino studios here on Kaplan and crew. All right, great friends. We welcome you back. It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man, although no Grande today. Jason Lawhead is filling in for Grande. He had a wedding last night. Uh, it was awesome. I will just say, I, I don't want to play any videos for those of you that are watching on YouTube or watching on TV. I don't want to play any videos of the wedding until we talk to Grande about you know whether or not he has a problem with us playing videos from his from his wedding. But I shot a bunch of them, you know? And I was thinking that we'll air them, but again, I, I want to check in with Grande. I wasn't even sure. Hey, Brown, I wasn't sure last night if I could post pictures from the wedding, you know, just of Dude, us. I, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't really? have. Weddings are weird. Here's why I wouldn't have. Yeah. Because weddings are very personal. And mm -hmm. he had, I think, it felt like five photographers there at one point. So mm -hmm. it was well shot. It was well covered from a... uh uh a photography standpoint a videography standpoint and so they mm -hmm. may have wanted it to go out in a certain way at on the dance floor totally different but at linda mm -hmm. house that entire thing yeah don't post any of that the dance well, floor I did. stuff knock yourself out well i posted it i posted it on my instagram well, i know it's, it's you it's you so it was yeah too late i mean it. i was definitely i was listen and here's why i posted i'll be honest with you because we have a lot of people who are fans invested. of alex's and and they're invested in alex they love him uh, he brings a lot of pleasure to a lot of people's lives, you know, on the show. And so people wanted to see what was going on. The other part of it is I didn't know this. I felt like kind of an idiot. Did you know he wasn't registered for a gift? You know, uh, he because he said, I didn't he know. Didn't... We, we clowned him all the time. Yeah. 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 He was not registered. But this morning I got a text from Rachel who said, did you know that Alex and Mar, while not registered for gifts, they actually have a website for their wedding. And there's a link that if you want to send the money, you could do it on the website. I oh, went to and I bought them a gift card because I figured that the gift card could go in your wallet. 
You go on this honeymoon for the next three days and here, here's a whole bunch of money on this gift card. So I didn't know that they had a website where you could actually Zelle them or PayPal them or Venmo them. D did you know this, Browner? I didn't know this existed. Look at this. He's a sneaky guy, man. He is I sneaky. I had no idea. He, he I had sneaky. no idea this existed. That sneaky right. sucker. Put this, Wait, in, this going. Guy. No, no, but here's why. Hey. Here's why. And hold it up on the screen for a second. So, Jay, you'll love this. You ready? Mm -hmm. So, Alex, Alex, people had asked us, hey, how could we send a gift to Alex? And Alex was like, no gifts. We have right. a one-bedroom condo. We got a rice cooker. And right. we got a, a steamer. Yeah. And we, we got an air fryer. We I can't take on any other stuff, you know? He's like, yeah, you so want to give me a gift? Give me a three bedroom condo. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> if you want to give me a gift, help me pay for the next condo. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, right. so Alex, what he did was he said, no gifts. I thank you. We said, Hey man, why don't you put a, a QR code on the screen? Cause him and his buddies all went to uh, these bachelor parties and they would have QR codes on their hoodies. And then people would give the QR code. They'd send them money for drinks. So I'm like, you know, you had no shame in taking money for people for bachelor parties, but for the wedding, he didn't want any of the, gr the great friends to send any gifts. So a lot of people have contacted me directly and they've said, where can I send a gift? So I gave everybody my PO box. I was like, yo, here's my PO box. You want to send a card? You want to send a gift? Send it to my PO box. So that was, you know, several people had asked for that, right? Um, including like Juliana and, um, and like, you know, Joe Rigby. And so, so many people ask, you know, how do I get your PO box? So I gave it to him. I did not know that they had a website where you could send them money. Had I known this, I wouldn't have stopped at a grocery store yesterday and bought them a gift card. I would have just zelled them money, <laughs> you know? So for those of you that were interested and anybody that cares and no pressure, and Alex is going to be humiliated that I did this to him, but I'm just telling you right now, here's the website. It's Zola, Z-O-L-A, Zola.com slash wedding slash Alex and Mariana 2022 slash registry registry. I know that's a lot for those of you listening on radio, but for everybody that's watching on YouTube and everybody that's watching on television, we've held it up here on the screen long enough. Zola, Z-O-L-A dot com slash wedding slash Alex and Mariana 2022 slash registry. You want to send Alex something? He's not asking. He's probably going to be pissed at me for putting that up on the screen. I didn't know about it until yeah. this morning. Is he going to be pissed, at yeah. Browner? Yeah, yeah. He was purposely trying to avoid that, and now you found it, and so we had to put it on the show. So that's his fault. I blame him. If he would have come I out and said, "Hey," that. if he would have come out and said, "Hey, I have a registry, but please don't send me anything," we would this would have never happened. So I blame him. Yeah, it's his fault. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. Yeah, you got to button those things up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. A lot man. of plan. A lot of plan when you're open. planning a wedding. Lots of plan. <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you one thing real quick, um, and then we'll get back to where we were going. Got to know where to hide the registry. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you guys something really quick. Um, Alex yesterday looked so great for this wedding. Mm -hmm. The dude has lost 15 pounds in eight weeks with iThrive. And if you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, and you click on the iThrive logo, it'll take you directly to their whole weight loss program. You don't have to change your diet. You don't have to increase your exercise. All you have to do is take this tiny little injection. You can do it yourself. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't take a lot of time. Anybody can do it. And I'm telling you, not just Alex, but several of our listeners have gone to iThrive and already are losing a lot of weight. And it's fully guaranteed and it's fully FDA approved. And so just go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, click on iThrive and start that weight loss. Alex lost 15 pounds, man. He looked good. He looked really good. At least I thought. You good. Yeah, he did. All right. Man, hey, guys, we, we were talking today so far about San Diego State and the reports about them moving into the Pac-12. And we were also talking about the Colts firing their head coach, which is it's interesting, but it's doubly interesting because they hire a, a television personality who's a former Colts player and a former Colts Super Bowl champion and Peyton Manning Center, Jeff Saturday. But the fact that they hire a former player who's in TV. I was just watching some of these reports on ESPN. Lewis Riddick, who so many people think every time a general manager's job is open, that Lewis Riddick should be like the first guy to get a shot at these GM jobs, even though he's never been a general manager in the NFL. He's smart. He seems to know everything about all personnel around the NFL. He he just, he just seems like a, a guy that you'd want to run your organization from a player perspective. And so Jeff Saturday wasn't on anybody's radar. 
to become a head coach. You know, I don't think that the other teams around the league I mean, were like, hey, when our job comes available, you know who would be great? Jeff Saturday on ESPN. He'd be fantastic. He really would. <laughs> but I, I will just say this. I don't think anybody gave John Lynch a chance. How could you take a guy out of television and put him into a front office when he has no experience having ever done it? But I think when you travel around the league and you see every team and you see all these players, you you have a different perspective, number one. So I think Saturday kind of qualifies, even though he's not out on the road calling games, but he is following the entire league. One of the things Lewis Riddick was talking about earlier today on ESPN was how bad the Colts' offensive line is, and yet they've got so much money invested in the offensive line. Lewis was saying, is it that the – the players aren't buying what the coaches are selling. Is it they don't like the offensive line? What is the problem with the offensive line? And that's the number one thing that a guy like Jeff Saturday should go in there and try and fix. But it's kind of hard to do when you're coming from TV in the middle of the season, dude. You cannot, nobody in their right football mind can tell you that this is a good idea. Now, if it works out and he gets the permanent head coaching tag, that's cool. But if I'm somebody like Brian Flores, this is why I sued the NFL. So you mean to tell me that through sheer access to the owner, this guy got the job? This yes. No interview yes. process. No, no, that's like, exactly what I'm telling you. Yes, because like, I've is, known Jeff. I'm, I'm, I'm the owner of the Colts. I've known Jeff Saturday forever. He right. serves as a consultant to our organization. He mm -hmm. won a Super Bowl with us. He was Peyton Manning's center. Yeah, there's no interview process going on here. I'm firing this guy. And I, whether it was John Fox on the staff or Gus Bradley on the staff, nobody would have complained if it would have been those two guys because they're already on the staff. Pulling this guy from TV is where I think the rub is. You bring up Brian Flores. This is not a, you know, Rooney rule situation not, where they got to go interview a bunch of guys. But if you didn't, if you didn't even do it, you didn't even interview a bunch of guys, the head coach, uh, the owner, which is in his power to do so, by the way just makes an arbitrary decision to get rid of the coach, according to reports, and hire uh, Jeff Saturday, that seems like that's a, in violation of the rule. Because no, 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 no. If you no, – oh, not, okay, so, not, so, not in okay. season – not in season interim. He labels, him as an, so he labels him as an interim coach. He labels him as an interim coach, and I'm, I'm sure that that labeling and that, that type of paperwork, however it's designed in the NFL – Protect so tell them me against this, the Rooney rule. I'm sure it does until the interim coaches now has to be in the interview hiring process in the offseason. I'm sure that they get some type of, uh, you know, amendment to that rule. Uh, there's no doubt that he can go shake that up and say, this is the guy that has been consulting me a lot. And after the consulting, I just feel like I'm gonna, I want him down there on the field to try to turn this thing around. We have no hopes of getting to the playoffs, even though they're only three, five and one at the end of the day, after the Tennessee loss, they're not not so far out of it they're not one and eight or oh and nine i mean yeah if they've the been man blocked, but was on the coaching staff which has been done traditionally I get throughout it. the nfl firings yes you do not nobody's I, gonna stay in it it. it's an interim guy who's been there right. so he's already been interviewed but, for the position but if you're giving yeah. a guy a job as the head coach who wasn't on any staff anywhere in the building but if anybody knows the rules, it's going to be Jim Ursay unless he's drinking again. That that That's the only thing that I could say. I mean, there's just the interim the interim label has got to have them protect him. If they want to say the guy that's bashing us on sports talk radio, who's been, you know what, we're going to hire him because he knows more than anybody. I'm sure that that would protect him even against that guy. Um, but wait a second, wait a second, Browner. What are you, wait, is your biggest gripe about this move that they brought in a white guy from out of nowhere versus giving a, a minority candidate a, an honest interview and opportunity? Is your problem the race of Jeff Saturday? Or is your problem that no. Jeff Saturday was a TV commentator and was not working inside the building, was not part of the coaching staff, and they brought yes. an outsider in? Yes, I'm just using these other things as instances to show why this is absolutely nuts. This is crazy. This isn't basketball where you can bring in a coach and the coach in basketball pretty much is a counselor. He's a, he's a psychologist. You're not really exiting and knowing as a basketball coach, depending on who's on your roster. You cannot tell me 
that you can bring in a guy who hasn't been in the locker room with these dudes for the last nine weeks and the five weeks of preseason and mini camps and training camps. The guy's not been in the locker room. And then you're going to bring some stranger in your bedroom and go, all right, honey, here we go. This guy's going to sub in for me while I'm gone. Like, come on, dog. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? Hey, listen, by the way, this story of Jeff Saturday to the Colts is interesting. But getting back to where we started today, the the report from Dan Patrick that San Diego State bomb, is going to go into the going to go into the Pac-12. Well, what's interesting about that story is because that's where we started today's show. There's been a lot of reporting since. Like, for example, there's this report from this uh, from this. I'm looking at this report right now on Twitter. Um, this woman's name is Nicole Auerbach. She's from The Athletic, and she is um, from uh, the Big Ten Network, and she's a studio analyst. This is all according to her, um, according to her Twitter. She says, and this is the quote uh, on her tweet, the report about the Pac-12 announcing the addition of San Diego State as soon as this week, a source close to the situation tells The Athletic that the report is inaccurate. It's Whoa. been my understanding that the Pac-12 will do its media deal before any conference expansion. I don't know who's right. I don't know who's wrong. Ooh. It all kind of sounds like it's all. Look, here's what it sounds like to me. Somebody told Dan Patrick, hey, the Pac-12 is going to bring San Diego State in as the next school. Dan Patrick goes on the air and reports it. And he's got a huge platform. People pick it up. Then here comes somebody from the athletic and they're doing their diligence. And somebody from the Pac-12 says, yeah, it's not accurate, meaning we don't have that plan in stone as of right now. We're still working on our media rights deal. And when that deal gets done, then we will probably make some announcements about expansion. But again, just kind of trying to guess here, Dan Patrick already probably has it on good source that, hey, we're working on finalizing our TV deal and San Diego State is going to join the league. And the reason that we know that in advance before we even make that announcement is because we need the TV networks to know yep. that we're going to have Southern California representation. And while San Diego State does, San Diego State doesn't have USC or UCLA's brand, it doesn't have San USC or UCLA's history or tradition. It doesn't have a ninety thousand seat stadium. But what San Diego State brings to the table is solid football, brand new football stadium, really really outstanding basketball, and a competitive basketball arena. And not to mention good baseball program. So yep. while while San Diego State and, and and the Pac-12 right, haven't like announced anything, you would think that Dan Patrick's report is about they're going to be bringing San Diego State along because they're doing a big TV rights deal. And Southern California is an important place to have a team. And so, again, it's not USC or UCLA, and it's not two teams in Los Angeles. It's one team down in San Diego, and San Diego is a different market than L.A., but if you want to have Southern California representation, San Diego State's what's available. Right. I think you cannot do this. You cannot do a television deal without the television people knowing who, if you are, if you are not bringing someone else in. And I think what you said is spot on. Whoever told Dan Patrick, they told him this with the confidence, knowing that they're adding San Diego State because then they've all, the Pac-12 have already told the network that they're adding San Diego State. That's probably how he found out about it. So I trust Dan Patrick more than I trust this person from the athletic because they'll get fed anything. I think Dan Patrick actually knows the person who's in the room doing the deal. Well, I mean, I'm just, again, one more time thinking about the Pac-12 here for a quick second. Um, so Phoenix, because you've got Arizona State. Mm -hmm. um, Cal and, and Stanford kind of gives you the San Francisco Bay Area. Seattle with Washington. But I mean, mm -hmm. otherwise, you know, um, San Diego from a television market perspective yeah, is absolutely. it's bigger than, let's say, Portland, Oregon. Yep. Um, it's bigger than Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. yep. It's 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 bigger than Tucson, Arizona, which is its own separate market from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, so so I think that San Diego State brings to the table not just solid football with a new stadium and what has been excellent basketball over the last call it 15 years. But what San Diego state brings to the table is the San Diego television market, which does have some expansion into orange County and into LA. Correct. And, and when you look at these other markets, Phoenix, 
Seattle, Bay Area. I mean, San Diego kind of fits with these guys. Now, yeah. Los Angeles is the big market, and you're Correct. losing that because you, USC and UCLA are leaving. But San Diego State is a – there is value. That That's what I'm saying. They, they, a, they do add value. This For this side of the country, this is the best consolation prize you could have gotten for these two teams leaving your conference. You still get it. You still get a base in Southern California. You still you get a brand new stadium, and you get a team that's competitive within the sports, and you get a great university added to it, which they'll tell you is the most important thing. But we all know it's sports, so yeah, it's a no brainer. And you know, with nothing else really to compete with in this town as far as major sports, it's now the Padres, Aztec basketball, and could be, you know, if you find yourself competitive in the in the Pac twelve and become, you know, a, a ranked team and you've got, you know, Oregon's coming in and you can get your program to that point. I don't care if it's lost a little luster cuz USC and UCL uh, UCLA aren't there. That is going to be a huge statement for that program. And then who cares that it what's it hold? 31,000, 33,000? Who mm -hmm. cares? I mean, when 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 the big boys always had to go up to Cal or or Oregon State or or where do these what do some of these schools hold in some of these stadiums? Not much more. And it isn't, you know, hey, UCLA with the numbers that are at, at the Rose Bowl, they wish they were playing in Snapdragon Stadium for home games, you know, in front <laughs> of a crowd that tight on top of them playing the kind of football, you know, so. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can get the program there, the stadium's actually great. And in that market, and it boosts them up as a, as a, you know, a team that has some you know, leverage, even though USC isn't there, who cares? Uh, you're the Southern California school in this major conference. Yeah. And listen, um, to, to start rivalries with Cal and yeah. Stanford mm. or Arizona state and Arizona sure. versus San Jose state. And, um, you know, some of these other schools that are just not competitive or interesting. Uh, I, Browner, you said earlier in the show today that you think UNLV would be a great partner with San Diego State to move because if you're the Pac-12, sure. getting the Vegas market would be very – you would be smart if you're the Pac-12 to say let's go get the Vegas market versus let's go mm -hmm. get the Boise market because they've had Don't traditionally care. decent football or they've had, so, you know, some decent basketball along the way. Uh, for Boise does nothing for you, in my opinion, if you're the Pac-12, whereas Vegas, the market, does the business do something of, for you. The they already do the Pac-12 football. The business of conference football would put Vegas ahead of anybody right. other than San Diego State on, on uh, this side of the Mississippi. And they already do the basketball conference tournament in Vegas in a hockey arena, right? You know, but UNLV plays in the Thomas Mack Center. They wouldn't have home court advantage going to that arena for those. You bring that, like Browner said, you've got the, now you've got the championship game every year in Vegas at the Raiders Stadium. Who cares that, it, you know, UNLV may, may play there. Um, uh, that happens, but you have now, you've created this nest with UCLA and UC, USC leaving. You get into that Vegas market, man, and you make that kind of a almost kind of little capital of the conference, even though UNLV will never be USC. Vegas is the thing that gets them all to be bigger by going and being attracted to that kind of centerpiece sun almost. I think it's a no-brainer. San Diego, Vegas, let those two programs try to, you know, bring themselves back, you know, forced to compete against some schools that they they were able to kind of, you know, dodge and stay off the schedule. Hey, Jay, yeah. Jay, hold that thought. Hold that thought. I know you're on a roll. Stick around, everybody. Jay Law's rolling. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. What's happening? It's Monday afternoon. This is Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. Grande got married last night. And so Jay Law is in all week long for Grande. Uh, let's see, Grande comes back on Thursday, but I actually have to take the day off on Thursday. Jay, that puts you back in on Thursday, correct? Yeah, I'm here Monday through Thursday, uh, I was told. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, and then on Friday, we'll put the whole thing back together again where we'll have Grande rejoin the three of us. And I think Linda Welby's going to jump in on Friday. She hosted the wedding. So uh, the week will be interesting. Um, That's great. Browner, how you feeling, man? How you feeling moving over from the three seat to the two seat? Now you're having to produce, direct, co-host, edit, deploy, everything that you got to do today where you go from uh, from where you are into what Alex does. What do you think? You already know what time it is. I'm built for this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Let me ask you guys this. Um, did anybody watch the Astros wrap up the World Series this past weekend on Saturday night? Was anybody watching that? 
I watched. I listen. I I saw somehow magically mm -hmm. through the magic of television and the internet. I saw the home run where they took the lead. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yep. That's all I saw. I, I I didn't see anything else. I was I was up at USC. Uh, USC was playing Cal at the Coliseum on Saturday night. And I was there and I'm watching the game, but I'm really just networking and eating and drinking. I mean, I'm really, I really was not that into rough, the game. Rough life. No, it just, it's just, you know, listen, when you go to games like that and you're in a suite, you know, you just, you just find yourself talking to people. I talked to coach John Robinson and I talked a lot to Anthony Munoz and, you know, bumped it out a little bit with Carson Palmer. Hey, uh, you'll love this Jay. Evan Mobley, the uh, from the Cleveland Cavaliers, was hanging out in that suite. And he was a hell of a nice guy. Man. So uh, it was a fun place to be. Food must have been good because he played really good against the Lakers <laughs> the next day. <laughs> well, he uh, he uh, he looked good, man. It was just you know it's fun to see like all these USC people kind of getting together in one play. I, I liked it. I had a good time. But the point is, is that the Astros were playing the Phillies that night and wrapped up the World Series. And I got to tell you guys, I had zero exposure and mm. today's monday i haven't gone back and watched highlights i didn't go on to youtube and like watch the you know the game recap in under 10 minutes my girlfriend said to me she goes hey what happened in the world series and i said all i know is the headline the headline is astros win the world series as for what happened or how it happened i got nothing for you okay. can we just accept that baseball is a regional sport and it doesn't matter like it's a regional sport. It matters to the people who cheer for the teams in the region in which they play outside of that. It doesn't make any ways. Like literally the world series was won on a night where nothing else was really happening and no one really cared. Well, yeah. I mean, no one here cared. I mean, I'm right. sure everybody in Regions Philadelphia was disappointed. Cared. I'm sure everybody in Houston was pretty excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen on Saturday afternoon before that USC game and before the game we're talking about with, you know, the Astros beating the Phillies, did anybody here pay attention to the LAFC winning the MLS Cup against Philadelphia in, um, I mean, at the bank right next door to the Coliseum? Did anybody anybody have any exposure to that championship? The ALFC. What is, Come it? On, is that? Like what are you doing? Gender? What is that? What are you is that? <laughs> oh, it's a soccer. Soccer. Oh, soccer. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> The soccer guy's not here. That's Brown, not going to help. LAFC MLS sounds like, you know, something I have to you know walk on eggshells. Around. Something you got to take um, pills for. Yeah, exactly. Dude, all I can tell you guys is this, is that because of my LA work, the guy who scored the game-winning goal in the uh, penalty kick, uh, that guy was in studio with me a week and a half ago. So, and there was a, it was really a great story. I don't know if you guys saw the story, but I, I know more. Here's what I'm getting at. I know more about what happened in the MLS final than I do in the World Series. That's all hmm. I'm trying to say. That's not good. Well, it's not I good for baseball. Right. It's not good for baseball. Right. Because if, if, if soccer is going to pass something in this country, it's going to be baseball. It's not going to no, pass no, no, basketball. No, it's no, not no, going to no. pass football. No. It, can pass, it can pass soccer. I mean, it I can don't, pass baseball. I don't, I don't but know. You also do. You also do have AKA LA cap in your label, right? So, oh, dude, now, right. now that focuses you out regionally to something because I think a lot more people would be talking about the, the the World Series if the Phillies were celebrating. I think there was a lot of outside national appeal enough, but once it got two two and three two, and it was inevitable. Nobody outside of Houston is celebrating this World Series. No one. And yes, it is more of a regional sport. But I think if a San Diego, if there was anybody there to take down the Astros besides the Yankees, you know, Yankees have their lovers. They they wanted to. But there wasn't a whole lot of people loving what was going to come out of the AL. And if anybody in the AL won it. And I think there would have been more focus. But only Houston people and Houston media wanted to see houston celebrate if and yankees, you haven't seen it out outward anywhere else the yankees would have been in that position it's a national story it leads every newscast it's true still leading it today have. absolutely talked about on the sports shows in the morning i agree if the dodgers would have done it if the cubs would have I done agree. it there's certain markets that if they do that it becomes a national story and the phillies would have been too they would have been a hey absolutely. look at a six seed. they would have been huge and it would have been right. like Probably you know correct. like you know most people didn't want to even look, I, you know, once it got to the top of the ninth, the leadoff runner was off, got out. I was like, I can't watch this. I'd rather watch Alabama win.
then 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 watch uh, they and lost. Then eventually yeah even worse Brian Kelly won yeah. so the, the worst case scenario no, no, I'm kidding but um that's no, but where your I point is right point. on dude if if Philadelphia wins they're the underdog people care if the Padres would have made it to the World Series mm-hmm. and the Padres would have beaten the Astros it's a huge national story because look little San Diego which has been so inept for so long finally rises up surprises the Mets surprises yeah. the Dodgers, knocks off the Phillies, and goes and beats the Astros. It's a huge, huge national story. But If Dusty Baker wins win- with anyone else, it's a bigger story for him. But yeah. people are kind of like, eh, we love you, Dusty, but look who you, you're affiliated with. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Congrats. And then they kind of look away. Like, <laughs> right. they can't even make eye contact with him. Like, congrats, Dusty. Glad you got it off your back. Oh, God, I can't even look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like Dusty Baker, people are like, he's one of the greatest guys. He's such a lovable right. character in sports. And you're like, yeah, I'm happy for him. Yeah. But I just, just don't like fist the bumping organization. Him like, yeah, there you yeah. Go. Right. I don't like Where the Astros. I don't like the guys yeah. who were part of the cheating scandal that are still there that were never punished. Yeah. I don't like the fact that other guys were scapegoated. And here comes Dusty all these years later. And it's like, right. Hey, we all love you. But man, I hate the Astros, dude. Like, people literally are like, you know, nothing's ever happened to me in Houston. I've been mugged in Philly, but I wanted the Phillies to win that series, you know? <laughs> like, like so I have some of the worst memories of my life in Philly, but gosh, I hope the Phillies win. Like, that's kind of how that whole thing was looked at, and if they would have rose to the occasion, there would have been a burst of enjoyment by ba- the baseball fan that is just, uh, you know, a Cardinals fan or a Padres fan or whoever, right? Yeah. So, I mean, for me this past weekend, just as a sports fan, like when my girlfriend said to me, what happened in the world series? I said to her, I go, all I can tell you is the headline. And that, that was sort of my weekend really, because, um, on Saturday, yeah, I was following the LAFC and major league soccer, which I know sounds crazy to most people who are listening right now, because we don't have MLS in San Diego yet, yet. Um, and you know, even though we've got a lot of soccer fans in San Diego, I don't know how many people really were caring about the LAFC. That was on my radar on Saturday. Saturday night, I was at this USC football game, so I wasn't really paying attention to what was happening with uh, with the World Series. And then, guys, I don't know about you guys yesterday, but with Alex's wedding, which actually began at 2 p.m., I saw some of the early NFL games. And luckily, Browner, how, how fortunate were we that we got to see the end of that Buccaneers-Rams game because we were still at Linda's house before we left to go to Alex's wedding. The Rams, I could talk about this forever, but I'll just make this quick comment. For as many people that thought Sean McVay is like all of a sudden now the greatest coach in the NFL because he had the Rams in a Super Bowl a few years ago that they lost to the Patriots, and then they all made, they made all these crazy moves last year, and they went all in, and the Super Bowl was in their home stadium, and they got the deal done. Sean McVay becomes everybody's wish list. Hey, I, I'll pay him $20 million to do TV on Amazon. And the Rams are like, no, no, no. We got to pay him a fortune to keep him here. And I just got this sense from the Rams that they had gone Hollywood and that for all the talk about how hard they work and how consumed they are, like everybody kind of got a little bit satisfied and the roster wasn't as good this year. And then a lot of bad things have happened along the way. Injuries on the offensive line, lack of playmakers in the receiving core other than Cooper Cup, all these other things. Stafford comes into the season hurt. Um, losses on the defensive side of key players who helped you win the Super Bowl. But this notion that Sean McVay is some some genius, some prodigy, he, that was him year last year. This year, here's a question. How is it that you have a lead in a game against Tom Brady on the road and you have no running game to speak of. And if you're doing the math based on how many timeouts the Buccaneers have, if you can't run the ball and you're going to just try and eat the clock and they're going to call their timeouts, they're going to get the ball back with like 40 seconds to go, which Brady and, and the crew, they hadn't done anything all day offensively other than drop touchdown passes and drop you know first down completions. But you're still giving Tom Brady at home an opportunity to beat you with 40 seconds to go. And that's exactly what Tom Brady did when coaches try and run out the clock and they sit on the ball rather than going for the kill, they wind up getting killed. And that was, I don't know about you guys, but that was like most of my NFL yesterday was just seeing the Rams fall apart and seeing the Buccaneers maybe salvage their season with a win. Did you guys, did you guys get a lot of NFL yesterday? I know for us, it was the wedding. How about you, J-Law? 
Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, the Browns were on a bye week and um, I was just kind of uh, resting at home from the trip and everything. And, and I saw that game and you look at it and the, and the Rams really have become kind of like the Lakers did after the bubble title. You know, you've got your you've got your superstars. You're still really, really good at some positions, but you've lost a lot of kind of the roles around the stars and I feel kind of like there was a big exhale once they won that thing, the way the Lakers have kind of won that thing. They, the, the, the superstars that are in the locker room trying to carry that thing kind of there's a big exhale that you got it done. You did it. And maybe, you you know, as a group, you overachieved and some of those other guys that helped aren't around and there there aren't playing to that peak performance. And there's other really good teams that, you know, you're going to see on the schedule every week. Um, and I just don't feel like. They're at that that at that point. Maybe McVay is, you know, enough of a veteran by now to realize, like, here's where we are in a 17 game schedule. I'm just going to let us kind of to try to you know, work through some deficiencies offensively. We'll try to win some games. That was the one we gave away the defense at the end. I thought we could just win it by, by the way we've played. And, and uh, look, I'm going to flip the switch with these guys later on in the year. And when Seattle comes back to life a little bit and maybe San Francisco makes their move or whatever, we're going to be doing the same thing. And then we're going to be finishing the way, Maybe he's that savvy by now. I don't know, but it doesn't look good, and it looks very Lakers-ish in the last couple of years since when, they won the title. If we're going to talk about football, you have to start the weekend football coverage in Chicago because I got <laughs> to tell you, there was a smart man that once came on this show, R.I.P. said, Brown don't know nothing about quarterbacks. Look at me now, baby. Justin Fields, welcome to the upper echelon of quarterbacking, baby. That's how you do it. I told y'all. I told y'all. I'm using that. I told y'all so, guy, until I'm I told y'all so. And I told y'all, we here now. We got the quarterback. We might have the best quarterback in the division. In a little while, we might have the best quarterback in the NFC. Come on. Just, I'm just saying. I mean, listen. Justin Fields, give him a lot of credit, man. 15 carries, 178 yards, and a touchdown. He had that 61-yard touchdown run. It was spectacular. But as a passer, um, 123 yards, and he averaged 4.4 yards per pass. That. Three touchdowns, so I'm, I'm giving him all his credit. But, but Browner, wait a second. You do this all the time. You tell me all the time that somebody like Otani's no good because his team doesn't win. Mm -hmm. you, just, you just propped up Justin Fields, had a great game, all these stats. Team still lost. All right, player, let me break a little something down to you. All right, player, break it down. I watched the game. See, I yeah. took it in. Yeah. Deep breaths, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you you hit a long drag. You may hit a little two times, a little bit of extra cough <laughs> deep in your chest, okay? I took it in, all right? If you watch the game, yeah. the passing numbers are tremendous. If you watch the game and you see who he's throwing to, the passing numbers are astronomical. Because if you watch the Miami Dolphins pass, their guys are wide open. And I mean legit, like college open. And Tua's getting tons of credit because he's making these little passes and guys are scooting up. Cool, cool. Tyreek Hill might be the MVP of the NFL this year. That got nothing to do with the quarterback. That's the guy. And then you turn to the other side and you watch a guy in his second year, his 18th start, carrying the entire franchise on his back because they got no defense, they got no skill positions. So instead of passing for 400 yards, he got to run for 170. And then he got to throw three touchdowns because when you when the light comes on, the light is on. And for him, it's Motel 6. He left it on for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Browner, I've never seen you oh, so happy man. about your team losing. Listen, I... Ain't that wild? So the previous the previous week, they should have won that game too. If Justin Fields is throwing to guys and it's hitting them in the hands and they're dropping, I won't even talk about the pass interference. It's hitting their hands and they're dropping it. That ain't on him. If the organization trades your best pass rusher in Khalil Mack in the offseason, then trades your second best pass rusher last week, and then trace the middle linebacker the day of the trade deadline, who was your, your last best player left over. What you what are you gonna do? He can't tackle. He can't <laughs> tackle. Well, I'll say this: I didn't get to see as much football yesterday as I normally do, 
Jay, you mentioned that uh, our Cleveland Browns were off yesterday, so I, I wasn't like our, tuned in. I love it. In that, uh, that's our, those are our guys. I love man. it, dude. I love those are our guys, our guys. Cleveland Browns. I, I, nothing makes me happier about the Browns right now than that you're one of the us. Like, that's great. <laughs> uh, just a couple of comments though, around the league. One, uh, the Chargers beat the Falcons, which you know any road win is a good win. Um, and I, 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 you know, I want the Chargers to lose, but I love the story. Have you guys heard the story about the kicker that won the game yesterday for the Chargers? Do you guys happen to mm -hmm. hear the story? This guy know. has played in two NFL games so far in his career. Dicker the kicker. Yeah, he, he played. I'm trying to remember who he played for earlier in the season. He was, you know, somebody's, you know, like one week fill in for an injury, kicked the game winning field goal that week for his team. This week, he's the first time ever with the Chargers. Nobody knows who the guy is in the locker room. He winds up kicking the game winning field goal for the Chargers. So while I hate the Chargers, you know, I love stories and I, I love a, a good story about a kicker who gets an opportunity. So I was I was kind of a little bit in on that one. Got it. Meet the special teams unit till he was in the huddle. Right. right like, there. seriously, they, <laughs> they were like, who are you? Um, yeah. Hey, I'm the kicker, guys. Uh, let's try to knock this through. All right. I'm three. Boom. <laughs> Other stories from around the league, though, yesterday. My Detroit Lions. I said I was going to become a Detroit Lions fan because of the hard knock show. The Lions beat the Packers and Aaron Rodgers looks as done as LeBron oh. James looks. Oh. One guy looks to be quitting, and one guy looks to be done. Aaron Rodgers is like he's quitting. LeBron's not quitting. It just it ain't there no more. Dude, LeBron that not, not LeBron's not going to play tonight. Is that is that because he's really legitimately hurt, or because LeBron's like, you know what, man, we suck. I might as well just take take my time. Did you have any air balls he shot yesterday? Dude, he can't shoot anymore. The legs. I mean, his jump shot air balls, throughout his like, career I, was heavily built on his lower body. And at yeah, they're gone. That's what's he, gone. He missed. He airballed a fallaway jumper from like 14 feet between the you know arc and the key on the wing a little bit, a little pull up spin mm -hmm. off the back, you know, fatal. You know, like the way he likes to get you fadeaway. I mean, it it was bad. It looked like somebody shot it out of the air and it just <laughs> deflated to the floor. It was terrible. And then he air aired a th couple of threes. I mean. It's over. Ooh, dude, it's, it's over. It, it is over. I mean, it, it is over. hard to believe, but it is over. Give me one second before we keep going around the NFL, because uh, I want to get to the fact that the Jets, this is amazing. The Jets are six and three, and they beat the Bills yesterday. I want to talk about that coming up in a minute. Before I do, shout out to my man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty Services. Uh, just a quick note from Gary. Gary always says it's still a great time to buy a house. And a lot of you guys are probably thinking to yourselves, why so? Because the interest rates have risen. Um, but so the prices have come down a little bit what's going to eventually happen is the interest rates are going to come down and the prices are going to go up. So what Gary is saying is, is that if you can afford to buy now, now's a great time to buy because if you buy now, the rates are going to come down. You'll eventually find yourself refinancing and taking yourself from whatever it is, a 6% or a 7% interest rate, getting it back down to a three or a 4% interest rate. And th these are, by the way, these are, this is just me kind of talking, but um, Gary's the expert. This is why you contact Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Great friends, never make a move in real estate without first talking to our guy, Gary Cooper, mountaintrustrealty.com. Um, back to the NFL, though, just working our way around. To see Aaron Rodgers and the Packers lose to the Lions when the Lions and their coaching staff seem to be you know, in some real big trouble. They made a trade last week, and the tight end couldn't have gotten out of there fast enough. But how about this story? How about everybody thinks the Bills are the best team in football and the New York football Jets beat the Buffalo Bills yesterday, 20 to 17. I definitely thought that the Jets were going to cover because it was like a 10 and a half point line. But to win, you do we got to start taking the Jets for real now at six and three? Four and oh on the road. Uh, no, they shouldn't have won that game. That's Josh Allen's Four. fault. Like they, they shouldn't have won that game. Just like ironically, the Chargers shouldn't have won that game. I was gonna play a highlight for you, but we kind of went past it where uh Chargers fumble, the Falcons pick it up, running the 40 seconds left in the game, run 40 yards to the other direction, and then they fumble it. Just and the Chargers get it back, and that's how they won the game. Like it's it's impressive. It's impressive, but no, they shouldn't have won that game. No. The Jets shouldn't have won. I'm not taking them serious. Now there's talk that Josh Allen may have gotten hurt in that game. Ooh, now, now that's a headline story. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about this one? How about the Raiders just so bad? And, you know, they they lose to Jacksonville. Um, not that Jacksonville's any good, but the Raiders being as bad as they are, 
I mean, Browner, we had all this talk about Devontae. Oh, and five on the road. <laughs> so bad. They're oh, and five on the road, Jay. Oh, and five on the road. The yeah. So Jets are four. No, on the road. Vegas is 0-5 on the road. Who would have thought that at the beginning of the season with like, you know, who they had coming in, coaches, well, Devontae uh, Adams. Let, let's get right well, let's get right back to it. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Everybody stick around. We'll get back to the San Diego State story and more from around the NFL yesterday. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. Hey, final segment of Kaplan and Crew. Although for everybody listening on 1090, I want to tell you, don't go anywhere because another hour of the show is on the way on radio. Normally on Monday nights, we hand off to Browner and Lawhead, but we've got Browner and Lawhead here because we're all filling in for Grande, who got married yesterday. So uh, stick around. If you are a 1090 radio listener, you'll have more of the show coming up. For those of you that have been with us for a long time so far today and you're hanging out with us on YouTube, we'll have a separate finish for everybody on the uh, YouTube slash podcasting side. So happy to have everybody here. It's a Monday afternoon. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. If you're just getting with us, let me reset where we've been so far today. Number one, Dan Patrick early this morning had a report that San Diego State is headed towards the Pac-12. Most of us kind of ran with it and felt like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We've been kind of hearing it. Uh, there was a report, not a report, there was an opinion piece many weeks ago about why San Diego State makes all the sense to join the Pac-12. Then, just at least internally, I've told you that I've met with Mike Bone, the athletic director at USC, who's the former athletic director at San Diego State, and he has said to me, yeah, it, it, it seems to, to be reasonable to consider that San Diego State would be a very attractive partner for the Pac-12. So I had that little nugget. The other part of it is that uh, J.D. Wicker, the athletic director at San Diego State, who I've always just assumed as soon as the stadium would be built, he'd have that on his resume and he could bounce and go to a, a, you know, a power five type school. There's been a lot of talk about him possibly going to Mississippi State. Apparently that's where he's from or maybe that's where he went to school. But Wicker has said publicly, there's a lot going on at San Diego State. And we got a lot of things to do. So he wasn't denying it, but he also wasn't like jumping at it. And maybe with San Diego State possibly joining the Pac-12, Maybe you don't take off to go home. Um, so all of those little things all sort of make sense. And then there was a report from The Athletic earlier today that said uh, the Pac-12 is reporting to The Athletic that San Diego State joining the Pac-12 is currently inaccurate and that they're not going to do anything until they get their television rights deal work uh, worked out. But I don't believe that for a second. I believe that Dan Patrick's got the report that, hey, if they're working on their television rights deal, Whoever that partner is going to be, whether it's ESPN or CBS or Fox or whoever it may be, Amazon, Apple, I don't know. Whoever it's going to be is going to say, well, what are you going to do to replace USC and UCLA? Because we don't have the Southern California market anymore. And chances are what's being said is we're replacing them with San Diego State. And no one thinks that San Diego State is a replacement for USC or UCLA. And no one thinks that San Diego is a replacement for LA from TV market perspective. But it gives you back some portion of Southern California. So we were there. We've also talked about Frank Reich being fired as head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, which is an interesting story, but more interesting because the Colts are hiring Jeff Saturday, who's been an analyst on ESPN for years, who's been a consultant to the Colts ownership because he played there and won a Super Bowl there and he was Peyton Manning center. But John Fox is on that staff, who's a former NFL head coach. Gus Bradley is on that Colts staff, a former NFL head coach, and they go out and they reach for one of their own and bring him from TV into the head coaching job, which he never been a head coach. He, ne he never been an assistant coach. We talked about that story quite a bit. Um, and then we were getting into the NFL and what happened this past weekend. And uh, Browner, you started going off on how great Justin Fields is. And that's kind of where we are today. First of all, I didn't start going off on how great Justin Fields was. was. I was telling you, I was making a statement of fact how great he was. he was enjoying that he was right in a quarterback he's always wrong category is what he was at. that's where he was really feeling good today he's and if uh, i'm gonna if i'm gonna get good. one if i'm gonna get one quarterback correct r.i.p to my dog if i'm gonna get one yep. right i'm glad it was this one john clayton's looking down and he got a little smile he wishes he could just be across the screen saying some smack to jb right john now clayton's looking down going well about time you got enough of them yeah, wrong. about time john clayton but is all listening. that running sustainable i mean is it because that's a lot of yards and you see like Tua didn't even run yesterday right like these guys have to learn lamar eventually has to taper back the running from the early times of how many times he carried the ball when he was a young kid coming in to where he is now and how much he's throwing the ball and how much he's starting to commit to the pocket i mean eventually kaplan does make a good point yes they the, the throwing plays did 
generate some things, but on a you know four yard average, the the low numbers of attempts and yards. Is that really sustainable to be the type of team, you know, even if they can get weapons around him, uh, that brings those rushing attempts down? Back, you know, what, sustainable? Games. back what, to back games, 30 point scoring. One of those games. Well, this so isn't a fantasy today. league in, the, in when it comes to January, hey, by bro. the time you last it out and get to February. Hey, I mean, bro. that's the, you know. Listen, I'm take this. I'm, this, this my, this, this. I'm on the beach with this, bro. I ain't, ain't, no, ain't no <laughs> He's just going to sip ain't, your ain't, cocktail and enjoy your month. European, You're going to enjoy your Monday. It, it, yeah, it my European you. vacation, man. Y'all not popping that bubble. Y'all uh, go here. Well, I know, but, but it's amazing. That, in there. I don't it, care. It, it's just amazing the lack of consistency. You know, when I bring up Otani and all the stats, you tell me it's nerd alert time, and the only thing you care about is wins and losses. Mm-hmm. Now you're bringing out all these great stats that Justin Fields had yesterday against Miami, mm-hmm. and they lost the game. And instead of talking about losing the game, because that's what's most important, you're mm-hmm. celebrating the stats. Why? Where is the consistency, dog? The consistency comes in at this particular point right here. When yeah. I say Otani hasn't won, Otani been in the league – doing this for a while yeah, like so two he's three a, years he, he's established yeah, himself years. he's established himself amongst the baseball uh uh talkers and, and airheads and, and and mouth breathers as yeah quote unquote, the best okay he's pitching he's hitting he's quote unquote the best okay this is universal i'm it's me and a bunch of people in chicago are telling you justin fields is great that's it this ain't the football ain't telling you that. This is just a couple people. You, you people, you people telling me he the best thing to ever pick up a baseball in the bat. So I need to see wins. I need to see success. So that's where the consistency comes in, brother. There you go. Beep boop boop beep beep boop boop beep pop pop. <laughs> he's doing one of his, he's being one of his own beep boop beep. He's doing that. He's doing that. Beep boop beep beep boop beep beep boop. There it is. He got, the the nerd, he got the nerd goggles on. He got the nerd I, goggles on. You got to have the nerd goggles. Our young candidate, beep boop beep, MVP candidate, beep boop beep boop. <laughs> Justin, Justin Fields, 178 yards rushing, beep boop beep boop. Justin yeah. Fields, 100 yards passing, <laughs> beep boop beep boop. Bears <laughs> losing the game, beep boop beep boop. Does not compute. Does not compute. Let me ask you guys this question. I talked a little bit about the Rams earlier and how the Rams have completely fallen apart so far. And I talked also earlier about how the Jets beat the Bills, and the Jets are 6-3, and three, and I'm asking the question, should we be taking them seriously? Because they knock out the Bills, who everybody thinks is the best team in the NFL. What do you guys think about the Seattle Seahawks at 6-3, and three, who win yesterday against the Cardinals, who are terrible yet again? Now, I don't think that the Rams are going to the playoffs. I know the Cardinals aren't going to the playoffs. Yeah. I definitely think the 49ers have a lot to say in all of this, but have the Seahawks become the team in the NFC West when no one gave them a shot to be that? And they smartly gave Russell Wilson to the Denver Broncos. Are the Seahawks a team in the, in the NFC West all of a sudden, should we be taking them seriously? I, I no. I think the 49ers will at the end of the day, win that division and Geno Smith will revert back to Geno. I think what the Seattle Seahawks are doing is fantastic. They're, they're using the formula that got them to the Super Bowl that made Russell Wilson famous. They're running the football and they're making timely passes with Geno Smith, which Geno Smith is doing his thing right now. Their defense, their draft picks hit. Seattle's, what they're doing is a formula to work going forward. I think what San Francisco is doing is a formula that will work right now. So I think San Francisco is going to win that division. But I, 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 you got to take your head off to Pete Carroll and what he's been able to turn over in such a short time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think they're here to stay for the for you know what do they win the division? Maybe not. Maybe San Francisco d- does, and I, I agree with Brown. I think San Francisco eventually hits a cruising altitude here and starts playing the games that just and then once November and December start mashing together, they're gonna they're gonna probably have success. And maybe Seattle finds a little skid somewhere, but I think at least as far as a wild card and a contender, I, I don't think that this season is gonna go south for them. I think that they're gonna do more of this, uh, maybe not as, uh, you know, on a four game winning streak level so much. Um, but I think they will be there with something to say within the division or the wild card for sure. At the end of the season, the way they're playing and Pete Carroll 
is going to make sure he's been in there before. But yeah, it's been with Russell Wilson, but I think he he knows how to navigate this thing the rest of the way as long as Gino you know stays healthy and these guys play the way they're playing. Browner, I hope that everything you said is wrong. In other mm-hmm. words, I hope that Geno Smith proves you wrong. Uh, and and proves to everybody, hey, look, I've been in the league for a long time. I got drafted by the Jets. No one really ever succeeds there. Mm-hmm. I've been sitting here biding my time. Seattle had confidence in me, that so much so that they were able to let Russell Wilson walk. Um, and they did bring in another quarterback. Didn't they Didn't they bring in somebody else? That, oh, they, from wow. Denver. Uh, yeah. And so um, I love that Geno Smith is succeeding, and I hope that you're wrong. And I hope that John Clayton is right, that you don't know anything about quarterback play. And I hope he's up there looking right now because he was a Seattle Seahawks guy going, you're wrong, Browner. You're not watching the games. Geno Smith is playing out of his mind. And Geno Smith is about to become somebody's starting quarterback going forward, if not staying with Seattle. Come on, Pete. Come on, Geno. Love to see these guys succeed. And and you know what Seattle and the Jets have in their favor right now is that in the last couple of years before this year, we saw some really great football across across the NFL. Teams playing really good, good teams playing really good, good games week to week to week. This year's been a disappointment. There's been a lot of bad football. There's been a lot of teams that were supposed to be good playing very bad football Mm -hmm. and still playing bad football and not figuring out their way. Yeah, the Buccaneers won last night, but that's not what they want to be doing in week nine. This isn't the kind of football they want to be playing in week nine, win or lose. And a lot of these good teams are finding themselves you know with some and so the Jets and the Seahawks really playing the kind of football they're playing they're kind of playing the kind of football that we saw a lot of in the last couple of football seasons from teams they're playing at that level they stay there and right around there they're going to keep winning games because there's not a lot of good football teams playing a lot of good football consistently over over the map I mean and then we saw that and which made it tough in the last couple of years, if you were a football team to kind of weather that 17 game schedule and, 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 and you know, and, and, and kind of size up in the playoffs where these two teams might have the, the perfect year for them to be big surprises. I mean, you got to look at it this way. The two biggest disappointments so far in football have to be the Raiders, who everyone thought would be good. Well, three, actually, the Broncos, who everyone thought would be good with the addition of Russell Wilson, they appear to not be. And the Packers, man, I... We can, st- and even though Tampa, Tampa Bay, I mean, yeah, that, that all of a sudden that division turned into the NFC East overnight. So they're in first place though. at four and five. The, the, but that the division of Bucks is in is still winnable for them. The sure the Packers aren't winning that division. The 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 Raiders aren't winning that division. The Broncos aren't winning that division. No. And we expected those teams to not if not contend for the the conference sure. title, but for the division title. And they're I wonder out. if I wonder if Aaron Rodgers is sitting there thinking to himself. You know what I've done here? I've outsmarted the Packers front office again. Or at least, you know, that's what he thinks. You he know? might outsmart it himself this time. Well, but no, no, but think about it from Aaron Rodgers' perspective. They gave him this contract that's like $50 million a year, right? Mm-hmm. And he knows they're not very good. Mm-hmm. So he can finish his career just banking money. And the team's not very good. And he and he can look back at that front office and go, I told you guys for years that I've earned the right to have an opinion at the table about how to build a roster and no one would give me a seat at the table. And then what did you guys do? You gave me all the money and there's no more money for really for anybody else. And this is the crappy team you've put me on. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to play out my career and I'll just bank the money and you guys are going to suck. And then when I'm done, you guys are going to be in total rebuild mode. And that's your punishment Packers front office for not giving me a seat at the table. That would be the most lowest low ball human move in sports I could have ever imagined a, a person that high profile doing. Well, that wait a second. That low. I, I compare Aaron Rodgers and what's going on with him to LeBron. LeBron got big money from the Lakers and extended his contract, but does LeBron really think that this team can win or do any damage of any kind until they make some major moves? And it's not all just Russell Westbrook anymore. Now we're seeing just how bad LeBron is. I think if the only major moves that the Lakers can make is LeBron. I mean, that's the major move. If the Lakers are going to move on from LeBron and to try to be better, like he's the move. Like that it's it ends when Aaron Rodgers doesn't have someone on his Same team with Rodgers. as good as AD. So I would I would I, yeah. I honestly believe LeBron James came into the season thinking that they could compete because he thought they would get rid of Russell Westbrook and they could figure the rest of it out. I don't I I still think he thinks that they could compete. 
I thought he hoped they could, but and now I don't think he really thought they could. I thought he hoped they could, and now he knows the hopes are. It took a week for those hopes to. The be air went the out of the balloon. That, yeah. that he that he really knows what really is deep down. I think he just hoped that Beverly hoped that Ham hoped hoped hoped, and there is no hope. And just like right now, that's what Rodgers is doing. And and I think Green Bay cut away from Rodgers at the trade deadline. I think they made their Brett Favre. We moved on. We'll end this thing when it ends. And yes, we may not have another you waiting in the wings when we were ready to just tell Favre one day, we're done with you. You know, that it was a quick pull of the Band-Aid and it's going to be another one right here at the trade deadline. Them going, you know what? We're not even going to get you better to beat the Lions. So let's get out of this thing. This thing's over. Um, we're, you couldn't even win it last year. You couldn't win it the year before. You had Tampa on the ropes at home. You had San Francisco at home. What are we doing here? We're done just like we were with Favre. And I think that's where this whole thing's at. Maybe the maybe, uh, maybe the Packers decide to uh, part ways with Aaron Rodgers and he gets picked up by the Indianapolis Colts so they can start another season with another <laughs> veteran quarterback. Unbelievable. Throwing out well, Jeff game. Saturday might have to come out of retirement. Ironically, too, so. the funny part about the Packers <laughs> picks – their last two offensive picks in the first round were Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. And that sounds insane, but that's a legit thing. Uh, wow. So, How about yeah. that? So, All right, hey, yeah. listen, let's do this, guys. Um, before we rock out of here, and uh, and we'll go over to the podcast side, so everybody who's watching on YouTube, everybody who's listening on audio podcasts, come join us here when we get off the air. Now, for those of you that are listening on 1090, we'll, we'll replay an hour for you. So if you missed anything along the way, you'll catch up with where we were earlier in the day. But Browner, I think now's a really good time to present the highlight of the day, man. Are you ready to go? It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Yes. Highlight of the day, yeah. Yes, yes. Read those deals off from our great friends at Toy Holistics, and I have a Alex approval Alex would approve of the highlight of the day that I'm about to show y'all today. All right. Here's what I want to tell everybody. Um, if you're going to Torrey Holistics in Sorrento Valley or California Holistics in uh, Chula Vista, come on down. Use our promo code. Got your back. You'll save 20% when you spend $75 or more. It is the sixth annual peanut butter drive benefiting Got Your Back San Diego, which is a local nonprofit that helps feed the uh, young kids of San Diego that are what is called food insecure. Mm -hmm. um, so if you bring in a 16 ounce plastic jar of peanut butter, you'll receive a penny pre-roll. Some brands participating in this November community outreach are um, Jeter's, Bright Labs, Gelato, Classics, Good Joints, Surprise, Surprise, Tory Herb Company, and more. So I just want to encourage everybody that if you go into Tory Holistics, bring a, 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 um, a jar of peanut butter, a, um, I'm just trying to remember the it's a 16 ounce jar of peanut butter, plastic, please, no glass, and you get a one penny pre roll. And then later on in the month, when we get close to Thanksgiving, we'll have a lot of other things to tell you about. But I just really want to remind everybody: it's this big peanut butter drive. Forgot your back, San Diego helps a lot of kids in town. You know, they they literally hand off peanut butter jars to these kids who don't have food um, in their homes. Wow. And so it's a you know you know what peanut butter is. So I mean, in terms of protein and whatever. So make sure you come on down. And uh, we'd really appreciate that. All right, Browner, what's our highlight of the day, man? From such a heartwarming and just good thing to do for people mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins is winning everywhere in life right now, except for in this video. Bruh, if you want to see a white guy massively uncomfortable because a bunch of black guys made him do something, here you go. I had to take the sound off. This is Kirk Cousins after the win, wearing everyone's chain, and doing some dance that I only Scott could mimic the corniness in this guy's dance moves. Okay, it so was, Kirk Cousins is on the team plane. Yes. He's the only white guy around all these black dudes. He's got his shirt off. He's got on his nerd goggles on. And he's got like a Mr. T starter set of yes. chains around him. Yeah, I'm going to play it again. Hold, hold up. Yeah. I'm going to play it one more time for y'all, okay. for the, for the right. people in the back. Look at Kirk Cousins doing yeah. on the wrist, yeah. on yeah. the neck. Yes, yeah. icy. And I guess when you when you win in the division like that and you balling like he balling, you can't hate on it. Can't hate yeah. on it. Yeah. I like those dance moves, Kirk Cousins. You can do those. You can duplicate those. Oh, dude. I was I was doing those last night at Grande's wedding. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, dude. J Law, you should have seen me and Browner on the dance floor at Grande's wedding. Yeah, you guys were putting up the Dukes out there, huh? That's what it looks, it looks like. He's just like, <laughs> like one of those little sock rock'em sock'em robots. Remember those things? Yeah, I love those. 
<laughs> we even see, we even like. Look like. He looked like one of those stupid little like you know. Look at these. Guy. Look at these pictures here, J Law. Uh, on the left, nice. Um, at least I'm seeing it on the left. Is me and my king crown, because Alex had one of those like photo booths uh -huh. that you put on funny hats right, and everything. Right. And I was like, hey king, I had to put that one on. Hey king, yeah, absolutely. And then Browder with the chocolate or the cho <laughs> the espresso the espresso martini or espresso the martini, right? yeah, espresso, espresso martinis, martinis. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he always talks about those. He loves getting himself an espresso martini. Oh yeah, you, you know. guys are looking fly, man. You guys, uh, you know, looking good. It was a great wedding. It yeah, really was, yeah, man. It really was. That's I, so cool. So Linda officiated it. Is that what you no, said? Or? No, Linda. Linda and her husband Austin oh, hosted oh, it at their home. Hosted, hosted, and uh, home. one of right, Alex's right, best right. pals uh, actually officiated it. And, um, cool. and it was funny cause, um, I'll make this quick cause we're getting out of here. Um, there was a best man speech and there was the maid of honor speech and they were, you know, they're not professional speakers. They were up there reading sure. their speeches. And my girlfriend, Rachel's going, get up there and say something. You need oh, to say something. Yeah. He's your guy. I'm like, I don't need to say anything. Browner will grab the mic at some point and just on cue uh, Browner grabs the mic unscripted, unsolicited. No yeah. one knew he was going to say anything. And Browner gave the most beautiful speech on behalf of the show. And it was terrific. Yeah, man. Shout out to my guy, nice, man. man. It, was good, it was a good moment. That's great. It really was. It was a good moment. Right, listen to me. Everybody who's watching right now, everybody who's listening right now, come over with us and finish up on the podcast side. Everybody who's on 1090, here comes another hour from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and crew, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, radio listeners. All right, guys, wrapping things up for day one of the week. Now, I am very codependent on Alex. Very codependent. As a I, made a, fact, I made a point of that during the speech last night. Yeah, you did. I'm trying to remember how, what the line was that you used. Sorry, dude. I can't, this stupid thing. <laughs> I can't even hear you because of this dumb fuck. I'm, I'm glad we're on YouTube so I can be like this stupid fucking headphone. Oh, dude, you don't understand. If this were God, if this were Browner right thing. now, we'd be airing Christ this the whole way through. And with, with Lawhead, we'll thing. air the whole thing. We don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this fucking thing. Already starting to act up on me. I can't hear out of this one. I just bought this thing a couple of fucking weeks ago. God damn. <laughs> I, I said in the speech, I said... Um, Alex will always, Alex is going to wait on Mar hand and foot because he's been doing it for Scott for at least 10 years. Dude, no doubt. That's great. Like, everybody That's loved great. It. It was, it was That's awesome. great. He has. That's he, great. He has, been, he has been holding my hand. But you've had him since college, right? I, I've been with Alex since 2010-ish when he was a college intern. Right. And then right. in 2012, when Billy Ray and I returned to the airwaves because we got fired in like February of 2012. And then by December of 2012, when we returned... Um, we asked Alex if he would produce the show and he wanted to do it. So That's I've been, awesome. so Alex, Alex and I have been together for 12 years and, uh, and 10 years where he was the full-time producer. And now it's been three plus years where he's been executive producer, co-host, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, and sure. I am completely codependent on Alex. But the one thing about Browner is, is that I just know this about Browner. All you need to do with Browner is say, can you do this? And Browner has got so much confidence like I do it's too much at times right. Yep. that Browner's got it all handled. Browner's like, no problem. I got it all handled. Got it. He got it. The difference is though, is that what Alex does every day is Alex sends me like 15 to 20 slides of all the content that we want to discuss mm -hmm. and like 15 right. to 20 stories that we're all going to discuss with Browner. I was like, I'm not expecting him to do that. Mm -mm. Right. Rock, you know? rock and roll, baby. That's it. Yeah. We're gonna turn I, right. Everybody's on. different. Every every player's different, right? Every everybody contributes differently. I, I'm the same thing. But yeah, Alex is an impressive dude because I've gotten to know him from basically the time. I mean, I started visiting your show shortly after, which was like 2013 when I started coming down and headlining a lot, and I'd be on the old Billy Ray show with you guys. And yeah, we were more frequent every once in a while. Then when I moved here. Um, and I started seeing you guys more on a, a way more regular basis before, you know, all of the crazy changes and then over, but he's just become such a polished from where I even saw him, where he started, you know, as I loved how his friends called him a television and, star. Oh dude, his friends yeah. yesterday, his yeah. friends at the wedding, they yeah. were all like, dude, our friend is a TV star. He's yeah. a radio he is, star. Man. He's a celebrity. Yeah. Like his, yeah. his friends look at him like. Wow, dude, you know, because they yeah. call him, you know what they call him? They call him Padiva. 
Yeah, that's you, hilarious. You call him that's beautiful. Isn't that hilarious? That's beautiful. That yeah, great? and good, man. They should see him like that because he's come a long way. He's he's not just some like, hey, I've been doing it. You know, this guy's been now. He's like you said, over a decade in the business, and he's just graduated to so many other heights, and he's made himself such a polished. You know, when you when you're not here, and he's running the show from the top. I mean, he everything he's done from that point, and. uh you know, when I did my one year here, I thanked him, man. I called him, you know, a, a radio beast in my post because he is, man. Everything he contributes is like, wow. Dude. So I'm happy because you can see how happy he is. Uh, you know, I've, I've met his beautiful wife a couple of times, uh, but you can see when they're together and just in photos and how he carries himself, how happy he is in the life he's made for himself. And yeah. that's the greatest accomplishment of them all right yep. there man yep. there is no milestone quite like those kind of things that you have that are the fabric and uh good for him man yeah it was a beautiful wedding uh jay's back tomorrow me and brown yep. are in jay tomorrow um i think linda will jump in on friday when alex is back and uh and we're gonna have great shows nice. all week long hey listen browner great job today really appreciate it jay law around, great man. job out of you and we are back Always tomorrow peace out everybody peace